This week, tune in to the Paul Feinbaum Show as I discuss... The delicious taste of ice cold, Dr. Pepper! Larry Culpepper? Hey, I'm in the middle of a promo! Sorry, Finey. The fans are craving so much Dr. Pepper, I thought I'd borrow some of your air time. Security! Hey, look, whether you're watching college football or calling to some guy's radio show, Dr. Pepper makes college football that much sweeter. So head to your local Dollar General and grab some today. Can I have one of yours? Hey, we got a caller. You're on the Larry Culpepper Show with your host, Larry Culpepper. That's it! That's Dr. Pepper, the one fans crave! And we welcome you to Monday. We have arrived, and look who's back. What's up? Hey there. Anything hey, going it's, on? It is great to be with you. Thank I am you. so happy to be here, Paul. And, uh, yeah, I will say this. There there has been some things going on. There have been things going on. But it was a weird weekend not having to – not being at a game. Exactly. We, we – uh, we had some texts back and forth with each other, like, what What are we doing right now? Yeah. Lots of trips to the grocery store, things, normal things just like nor- that just we're normal, not used to doing. Just normal, everyday things that uh, we both had. We don't know how to do those things. We're bad at that. <laughs> Our spouses can confirm. They can. Anyway. And yeah. they will be on later to, uh, to confirm. <laughs> to rat us out on how annoying exactly. we are. Exactly. Um, yeah. No, it was, it, it's a good weekend. Did, how was your weekend? Was it, it was good? good. It was yeah. good. Uh, great to be back, though, because when we last uh, were here, the fireworks were going off. We'll update you on that in a minute. Let me get you some uh, newer headlines uh, before we get too deep into the program. And the new signing day drama, dominating December. There's much left to be learned. A lot of criticism of the national signing day. If you're with us on our uh, 2 o'clock uh, ESPN2 show, we, were, we spent a great deal, Laura, talking about the new rule. Yeah, we don't like it. We'll talk about that more, though. Meanwhile, Scott Frost, he has uh, found himself a new job, but he's got some pretty valuable hardware. That is one of the more prestigious awards, the AP Coach of the Year Award. I saw something uh, interesting on that in a minute, but I'll get to I mean, I forgot Mac, Ma, uh, Mike McIntyre won last year, Dabo the year before, Malzahn in 13. Uh, Nick Saban did win this award. But not in a year that he won the national championship in 08. Mm-hmm. That's the year that he lost the SEC. A lot of Kellys in there. Les Miles. Les Miles won it in 11. That's a year that uh, he, did, he didn't win the national championship. Pretty obvious winning the national championship does not mean very much because I look at this list and not one of these coaches, if I am correct, won the that national year. championship. Right, because Dabo didn't win the national championship in 2015. Now Kelly lost. Yeah. Miles lost. Malzahn lost. Patterson didn't get there. Sometimes successful coaching, though, isn't always about winning the national That's championship. Right. I like that the award hasn't done it that way. It, it, if you win the national championship, you've got that trophy, right? You, you probably right? have That's, enough banquets to go to. You're doing all right. Yeah. But I like the pick of Scott Frost. You can make a strong argument for Kirby Smart, too. And I... I I would say that uh, both of those, with the, the way that they have turned their programs around, and, and Frost had more of a an uphill battle from a program standpoint, from a record standpoint, but Kirby Smart had to do it in the SEC. And I'll tell you another guy who I, I would have given serious consideration to was Dabo Sweeney, uh, mm-hmm. with a new quarterback getting back to the to the playoffs. They did return a ton of they talent, did. though, on both sides of the ball, especially defensively. But I, I could see that argument, too. It's... The, the thing is, there have been some really excellent coaching jobs in a year where everyone's talked about how, too. right, a year where everyone's talked about uh, there's been so much changeover sure. and people have underachieved. There have also been a lot of overachievers. It's been fun to watch. Anyway, welcome back to the program. It is uh, cool. We have a really big show on tap for you. Really big. Bo Bounds. I mean, when you have Bo Bounds as your first guest, you might as well. I think that photo really represents Bo well. I like it. Gentry. That is a name that I've always liked. I used to work with Gentry at, at, at a newspaper many, 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 many years ago. Andy Staples, nothing really special about his name. Uh, well, <laughs> Or Andy, for that matter. It, it, yeah. Um, I actually think Andy Staples has a very strong name. Gentry sounds like what? Sounds like it belongs in Kentucky. It's yeah, a great it name. Uh, anyway, welcome to uh, Monday. Um, an update on on the biggest event of last Friday a little bit later in the show. I don't want to spend too much time on that now because there was way too much time spent on it on social media over the weekend. Yeah, I think I'm still – well, the, the person who you're speaking of has blocked me on Twitter, so I can't see – per se what's being said so jim from tuscaloosa has blocked you on twitter okay no i have joined an exclusive club because he's blocked me um 
And, you know, truly, uh, we were all just having fun in all of this, and I'm glad we could have fun. I'm sorry that Jim feels it wasn't that much fun, but either way, it was a hilarious show. I'll say this. Um, you know, I was kidnapped and taken to the Tuscaloosa Country Club, but I was also driving home uh, during the show, and I was crying laughing. It, it was so funny. Just everyone who called in was great, and it, it was hilarious from start to finish. So um, and, and I'm glad great you, job, guys. I'm glad you said what you did because um, – we do try to have fun on this show, and even with someone who is as polarizing as the aforementioned Jim, uh, we didn't mean any any harm. We were no. we were joking. That's what we do here. Uh, we're all part of it, and sometimes I'm I'm the butt of the joke. Sometimes it's someone else. So uh, I, I think I've been the butt a lot. Uh, I, I, I enjoy it though. Yes, that is you, correct. Here's the thing. <laughs> that was a great quote. What was that? Um, no, I, I, that's what's great about this show. You, you got to be able to dish it out, but yeah. you also got to be able to take it a yeah. little bit. We like to give some ribbings around here, and um, you know, whatever. We'll 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 get to the bottom of it. Yeah, though. we will. And, there are uh, petitions out there that are. Wanting Jim back on the show, so we'll see how many. Yeah, and I'm I'm, I'm in a, an awkward goes. position just for his for historical perspective. Uh, three people. Yeah, uh, before we do that, three people have been banned from this show. One All one time. one remains a permanent ban. I won't go into, but yeah. it's a well known story and it's disgusting. Um, the other two were Phyllis and and Tammy, and both bans were overturned by me. Uh, I do have that power. <laughs> you are um, so powerful. And but in this oh, case, I'm not sure I really do have the power because because the decision was made above my head to yeah. suspend him and ban him. Well, truly, I know I that mean, sounds like I'm siding with Jim, but I'm not. I'm just no. That, I mean, it was Big Ten John and maybe Big Ten John's boss and and Mark Kubiak and I mean Mark might have called in from wherever he was. Yeah, and Danny said, you know, Danny Brams was there. By, by the way, for those who missed the now infamous moment, this is what happened Friday. But Jim, uh, he ain't bad. The only thing I worry about him is any man that hides is either a, a very rich recluse or wanted on the FBI's top team. Yeah, you know. So I guess I guess the summation of that, or or the deduction of that, is that Jim is definitely on the FBI's most wanted list. <laughs> you you really crossed the line today. What is this crap about taking cheap shots about me? With regard to FBI, why do you do that? Jim, kind that, of crap? that was just like a joke, man. Uh, no, that's not a joke, you fool. You're an evil. B- that's what you are, and I don't give a damn if I ever come back on your show again. You are a stinking evil. B- hmm. So uh, before the ban even came down, he was he was saying he would never come back. Oh no, he was done with all of us, right? Yeah. Well, here's the thing. Like we said, we were all just trying to have some fun. Uh, and I think we should still continue to have fun on this yeah. show. So not that and, I get to decide. And, and, and again, but, uh, as far as Jim is concerned, uh, yeah, I mean, there's nothing. I, I don't want to say anything because uh, this could end up uh, – there could be an, appe- an appeals process. <laughs> I don't want to uh, – uh, and, and since I will be the uh, – uh, I will be on the judicial tr- tribunal, I, I don't want to prejudice to him one way or the other. Well, you have to remain – even cute, exactly. because I mean, Paul. Truly, you may have to preside over this entire thing. I may, so and you- I just, uh, I think people know. I, I'm, I do not like the idea of, of, of blocking people. I've never blocked anyone on Twitter. I've never. I don't like to censor people. I don't like to shut people down. So uh, it goes against my better uh, nature or my inner self to to not allow anyone to be on this program. You are all inclusive. No, you really are. And I, I would say this. I don't usually block people either. I was a little upset that I got blocked by Jim because I really wanted to see what he had to say. Okay. Sometimes, I mean, the yeah, I mean, uh, you, you sent me a few of the tweets yeah. via text message, but I can't see them anymore. So it's very. Upsetting. Oh, you can't see them when I send them. No, well, I did see <laughs> <laughs> what you sent, but okay. I can't see them on my own. Okay. So anyway, um, but let's just. I, I, I do wonder though, uh, and Jim's always concerned about us putting his Twitter handle on, on the show. Uh, and, the, and the unofficial rumor is that he has blocked more than 4,000. I'm not trying to make your club yeah, sound any less I thought exclusive. I, was, I thought it was cool. But, but uh, he's not. blocked more than 4,000 people. That's, that was, I think he said that before, hasn't he, Randy? Mm-hmm. So why that would you a long time. Yeah. 4, I mean, have you, do you block people on Twitter? Not really. I, I've probably blocked maybe one oh, you or have two. Because you because I thought I have, you, though. I tried to follow you the other day. Well, I blocked you a long time ago. It was whatever. That's neither I was a little bit. There. I was a little bit. That that hurt my feelings. No, but get over it. 
Um, but I, but John Hayes follows you, so he tells. Yeah, me. well, John, I know, right? Uh, no, I, I've only blocked people who have been uh, crude or really inappropriate. Jim, Jim, you know, likes to be very critical, but a, a lot of times it's funny. His tweets, I will say, and his insults to me have been entertaining in many ways. So, w- it, would you? You're. You're not going to be on the tribunal then, are you? No, and I think I guess I just took myself out. Yeah, Maybe I'm no, a no, no. longer author- authorized to be on well, this jury, or yeah, you know, I, truly, what we should do is we need to put we need to put together. Well, I said uh, the other jury. day. I I, I, I asked Jim because it, it is the it's the Christmas season. Uh, we have our good friend the Archbishop coming on. I wonder mm-hmm. if the Archbishop should make the call. <gasps> I spoke with the Archbishop yes. uh, Archbishop Marino on on Friday, uh, on Saturday morning. And uh, I did tell him about because he knows Jim, right? Jim, uh, the first time we had Archbishop Marino on the program, we always have him on around Christmas. Uh, Jim got into a debate with the Archbishop about about the Bible, and he tried to tell the Archbishop. I mean, this is a guy who's <laughs> he could be the Pope. He, well, he I mean, he worked outside the right. Pope's office for many many years at the Vatican, and uh, he's a, he's an expert, uh, one of the leading experts in the world in canon law. I mean, this guy. Got credibility. He's okay. I mean, it's like right. one hair below the cardinal status. And Jim told him he was wrong about the Bible. There was some. <laughs> well, you know what? Then I think um, he needs to uh, listen to Jim. Okay. Okay. Uh, John Hayes has informed me that you uh, you may you may be in uh, Nassau this weekend or Friday. But, oh, I'm leaving but, on Wednesday. But yeah. you may ha- have to serve. During the game, I'm sorry. That's okay. I, I this is more important. Okay. I mean, this show is everything to me, so it's more important than the game. Let's uh, grab a call here. Sparrow, man, Sparrow is one of my favorite people. I don't know if you've ever met Sparrow. I don't think I have. Sparrow, uh, do you know? Uh, I want you to introduce you to Laura. Hey, Laura. How hey. are you? I'm great. How are you? Sparrow and I became friends many years ago. Sparrow, uh, we, we had this great, uh, Sparrow used to take care of a, of a close friend of mine who's blind. And Sparrow, uh, do you still do this, Sparrow? You take the truck around and, and she's a groomer. Yep. Oh, cool. I, I groom cats. <laughs> oh, I thought maybe so. you were going to me- mean that she groomed people. No. And I was going to ask her to come drop by here and groom us. We need all uh, the help we funny, can get. Laura. But you know, in this day and age, that's probably not the best thing to say. Ugh. I would. It's a very difficult time. Yes. Right. <laughs> right. Right. Um, so I wanted to first. I wanted to tell Laura that you are um, a fantastic representative for women on ESPN. For a very male-dominated uh, force, there you do an awesome job uh, representing women. Who loves sports? So thank you so much. Thank you for your work. Um, the other thing I want to tell you guys is I sent a box out today with things for little four-legged creatures, dogs and cats, and I usually send something to Trooper for Christmas. Oh yeah, I yeah. She, uh, uh, Trooper is Paul's dog. Everyone. Yeah, didn't know that. How yeah. is Trooper Paul? Trooper How is doing? doing well uh, under the circumstances. He's had a very difficult life. <laughs> 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 I know it's hard to live with you and the good doctor, isn't it? Uh, we're doing great. Yeah, I mean, I, I told uh, my dear wife would uh, would be lost without Trooper. Without so me, I- she'd probably recover quite well. But without Trooper, not a chance. So I don't know if anybody <laughs> in your room studio there has a cat but i did put some cat stuff in there so if there's anybody oh, you, oh my in the goodness east, anyone have a cat randy do you have a cat okay randy doesn't have a cat man no we, you know we cat, do need huh? kind of a a, a pet because cats will just hang out and never leave i would love let's get a studio pet yes that's that'd be great right Sparrow? Studio okay. cat. yes i su- i would send you food and everything i've you always need wanted to bring my uh, my dog in uh now my boss Stephanie Drilly has she the, loves dogs. the cutest dog in the Clumber world. Clumber Spaniels is what she yeah, has. Uh, Mr. Willoughby. And we need to, one day I'm going to have her bring Mr. Willoughby and Let's we, do we will it. bring uh, our dog in. <laughs> I, I have a miniature well, long-haired you? dachshund oh, who is, it, you know he's amazing. And, and Sparrow, if you know dachshunds, they're very headstrong. So he rules the world oh, yes. for being yes, very small, but... Like that cold they, place. They don't know how they're, they're kind of like Damien Harris. They don't know that they're a little bit littler than some. <laughs> yeah, don't tell Damien Harris that. You're exactly right. 
you know, so you should have named him Damien. That would have been awesome. I'm going to rename him. I think I'm going to rename Can him. Can you Damien. rename a dog? Well, they By the way, uh, confused, I had a next door but... neighbor in Birmingham who, uh, thanks, Beryl, really great to talk to you. Had a next door neighbor that, that, that got a dog, and he was such a malcontent, they, they gave him another name, and then they finally gave him away. Oh, I they thought gave you him were going to say owner. that the new name but he had, changed him up. And he, had, he, he had a couple of. Uh, he went through a couple of names. They thought maybe he was in an identity crisis. Yeah. If they changed the name, it would fix it. That's like when you wanted to change your name to Bartholomew. <laughs> Remember that? I am going to change my name because I think it's right now it's my only path to success. Bartholomew Feinbaum coming right up. We are going to come back. Uh, much more of the show. Laura and a cast of one, two. Cats and dogs. Cats and dogs. <laughs> Computer, execute 12.4p operation. Optimizing algorithm. Running encryption packet alpha. Night, night. Oh, I don't feel so good. What? What is it, computer? Is it hot in here? It feels hot in here? I feel a little clammy. I should lie down or something. A computer with a virus? Surprising. What's not surprising? How much you could save by switching to GEICO. Those oysters Rockefeller were a mistake. GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Glad you are back with us uh, here on the program. We have a couple of guests to come, and uh, we're delighted uh, that you're spending this time with us during the holiday season. Uh, you'll be uh, in, you'll be covering the Bahama Bowl this weekend. Uh, actually, I keep saying this weekend. It's Friday. It's Friday, and uh, yeah, UAB's in this game. UAB. And, you know, there are people who are critical of bowls, Paul, and how many there are, and people say we're rewarding people for being average and whatever. I, I hate that because I, I love what it does for these student athletes and especially these UAB guys who decided to stick around with this program to, to come back to make it work again and their work and their efforts have been so greatly rewarded. And so I was actually just talking to their SID today and he said they just couldn't be more excited to be at this bowl game. So I can't wait to see I'll them. I'll give UAB person. credit for a program that was a startup 20 some odd years ago. Mm-hmm. They, this is now the second bowl game. If my memory is correct, you may already know this. The only other bowl game they've been to is the Hawaii Bowl. Mm. So they have, wow. they have gone to some exotic bowl games. They've hit the lottery on the bowl yeah. games. I've done the Bahamas Bowl one other time, and, and they do really make it fun for the kids. They're at the Atlantis Resort. Oh, really? Yeah, it is truly a reward. Ohio's the other school that uh, – They still have the games. Michael Jordan suite up on top, the, uh, you the know, bridge suite? I would know things like that because oh. that's a, like a place that you would stay. Well, no, I went there uh, – uh, it's, a, it's a long story. I actually went there with a, with a couple of high rollers once. You um, weren't one of them? Uh, no, but uh, they t- they took us up to there. There's a bridge suite at the very top with it. I believe Michael Jordan either owns, mm-hmm. or, but it's it's like twenty thousand dollars a night. I only stayed there three nights. I, I decided the fourth night was yeah. just Over really budget. extravagant. Yeah, I'm glad you <laughs> limited that. But check it out. I will. I'll see if I can get in there some way. Like I'll, I'll pretend like I'm the maintenance person coming up to unclog the toilet and see if they'll let me in. You could. You'd be perfect. Yeah. Um, Ed is up next in uh, Connecticut. Where I haven't seen the sun in so many days. That I, I'm getting house worn already. My God. It never, the sun just doesn't shine here. No, I haven't seen the sun lately either, Ed. It's, uh, I, I don't think the sun's out anymore. I, maybe, that, maybe it ran away for the holidays. Yeah, the sun decided uh, to merge with Mercury. No, it's quite possibly. Yeah. Because I, I think it, it would overwhelm. Well, and then the moon was aligned in the seventh. <laughs> uh, there we yeah. go. <laughs> there we and go. Jupiter aligned with Mars, and was, that's, that's a song that from mom, like a that the Broadway mom play. The prophets? The age of the in, in the age. Of, remember, remember, hair. Uh, Ed? So was that the mamas and the papas? No, this was. Uh, well, I don't know. If, uh, this was uh, from the play uh, Hair. Who, who song? Oh, who, Hair. Okay. Who did this? Uh, I who? think the record was the Mamas and the Papas. Hair. No, I don't think the Mamas and the Papas did uh, Age of Aquarius. That was okay. the Fifth Dimension. Okay. I think oh, the Fifth yeah, Dimension did Age of Aquarius. The Fifth Dimension. The Age of Aquarius. My God. Well, before your Definitely. time. Definitely. <laughs> I'm on board. Yeah, this is like that, uh, late that was 60s. Really great music. That was really good music. So it, was, it was great music. It really was. It was great, great music. Hair was um, a breakthrough play. Yes, it was. It was, <laughs> I think, one of the first plays that had nudity. Oh, wasn't it almost completely in the Well, I didn't want to, I didn't want to embarrass anyone, but yeah, pretty well, wow. Why was it, it called it was, hair then? I don't know. I never saw it. 
No, it was a I great play. Jesus, I saw Jesus Christ Superstar. Yeah, that was a good play, too. That was also another good one. But, yeah. Um, actually, I saw it in Macon, Georgia, of all places. And there was a shock. I saw the Allman Brothers in Macon, Georgia, didn't you, Randy? Yes. Well, when did Greg actually die? Greg died about, what, two years ago or something? Two, three, yeah. No, Greg's been, Greg has not been gone long. I mean, I talked to him like, you know, Greg and I were, yeah. we, we actually died in April. I knew, I knew it was two or three months ago or maybe six months ago. Anyway, I completely Post. Was, you, you like the song Whippin' Post, Ted? Whippin' Post? Whippin' Post, one of the Allman Brothers' most famous songs. Yeah. No, I didn't really know it. That's not I mean, Wouldn't you say yeah. that was? Well, that was probably one of their top three. Yeah. No. And, and I hate to run, but we're up against a break here. We will come back and more of uh, Eat a Peach. That was the, their famous uh, record back in the early 70s. Mm-hmm. It was a great record. We're educating Laura on the uh, the Almond Brothers. I do like peaches. <laughs> the Almond Brothers are great. I need to bump up my edu- my my James Taylor education is top notch. Almond Brothers need some work. I'm going to work on it in the break. <laughs> Good deal. I'm going to work on sending you to break, and uh, we are coming right back. Welcome back to the program. Laura is here, and we are still no official update on you know who. Well. Let's keep taking some calls. I want to see who else is out there. The first call set the set the woods on fire. So let's go from Ed, who's almost <laughs> from Ed to Millie. Sounds like a Broadway play. Hey, well, Millie. hi guys. It's nice to be able to get in on. I couldn't get in on you guys Friday. Millie, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. It sure is. I, I called uh, Friday because I wanted to find out something about the bowl games. And the guy who answered the telephone told me I should uh, look it up on the internet. And oh, no, hold on a second, Millie. Oh, I, we need to know who that was. Did you take his name down, Millie? Uh, and it uh, sort of made me a little angry. Made me, uh, it makes me angry right now. Yeah, uh, no, the guy just uh, said hey, that. Hey, John I'm, Hayes, what's going on here? I mean, what kind of. What kind come of, on, John. I mean, what, what kind of guys. I mean, Hayes, what, what kind of people are you operating well, up Hayes, Well, Hayes and Kubiak have stepped out momentarily, <laughs> so they, they will be available for comment later. Millie, yeah. but Millie, I, I want to personally apologize. I know Paul does as well. well that is I don't not blame okay. you guys. I well, don't I know, blame you guys. But we want you to blame... feel welcome. We want everyone to yeah. feel welcome. Well, I do feel welcome. The only thing I wanted to ask you guys is, is uh, what was the oldest uh, bowl game? I've tried to figure that out uh, oh, when you know. guys well, started talking sure about get, it. Well, let's we'll get the research. We'll find out. On no, that. I tell you what, Paul we will. And I are uh, very smart, so we, we will look it up. Appreciate it. Uh, Rose Bowl, pretty Bowl. old. The, that maybe it's, that's why it's the granddaddy a, yeah, of them all. I bet there's a reason for that. Bingo, light bulb. Sometimes you have to do the, use deductive uh, logic. Uh, ben is in uh, Tennessee. Hey, Ben. When Hey, hey, Paul. Hey, Laura. Listen, hey. you want to have a little fun. I'm going to make it quick. I want to give a shout-out to my Memphis Tigers. Laura, have you ever been to the Liberty Bowl? I love the Liberty Bowl. One of my favorite games I ever did was there, and it was when Memphis knocked off Ole Miss a couple years ago. Justin Fuentes. Exactly. Did you did that yeah, game? We had Patch and Lynch. I watched that game from an airport. I didn't realize that was you. That was me. Okay. When I'm I like, had Laura hair says she wanted some fun. <laughs> Here's, I'm not promoting Sonic, but I, I got a good about, idea. I, I want you all to think about it. I'm not going to take it. What's not? You know, you hear about the two Sonic guys. You all know them, right? In the yeah. car. Yeah, we've seen right? them. Yeah. Guess what? I hear they're stepping down. So, <gasps> who would be the next best replacement? I think Mark and John would be perfect for it. Okay. They would be pretty, they would be I just like goofy that. enough to be okay, the Okay, then guy. you got Greg and Marcus, right? Yeah. I'm, 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 thinking, thinking, more, I'm thinking more Mark and John. I think you're right. You, you nailed it, Ben, on your first try. <laughs> Then I thought, hey, I thought about Paul and Tebow. No, they don't eat. No, and we're not Paul gonna do it. I, I can't do, so I, I I can't do it. I've already, got, well, I've already got to deal with McDonald's. Yeah, well, yeah, you do. Um, Mark and, and I'm John actually the next Greg guys, McElroy right? and I are going to soon be managers at McDonald's. That was suggested <laughs> by our friend Legend. Here's the thing. I would do it with Paul, but I would eat all the food. So that would be the issue. Right, so Paul wouldn't to, eat. No, I can see wouldn't. Martin. They look I mean, like I have a, Ben, I've been to lunch with Laura, and she's like, I, I mean, I, I will, like, get a call, a quick call from Randy or somebody. I come back, my plate's clean. It's like a <laughs> uh, it's like a bear, like, came out of the woods and just oh. mauled, mauled through the well, restaurant. Well, she probably to grab exercises, and, you know, she's no, probably. No, I actually don't the, exercise. I'm, it's going to catch exercise. up with me soon. Well, you're blessed. But well, anyway, just well, to have fun with the rest of the day, if any callers want to call in, let's see who the. The best candidates, I'll go with Mark and John. Okay. I like it, Ben. You're down. Yep. Good stuff. Good job. 
Yeah. All right. Later. Later. Peace. Matt is in San Antonio. Matt's always one of my favorite callers. Hey, Paul. How are you guys doing today? Hey, Matt. Um, I was wanting to talk about a and but the first thing I want to talk about, I was wrong about the offensive coordinator, Paul. Yeah. It's not from Duke. He's from the Memphis Tigers. Yeah, Daryl Dickey, yes. Yes, I was wrong about that one, Paul. Well, listen, Matt, we, we're always wrong about things. Mm. Yeah, and I wanted to ask Laura some questions. Go ahead. What's up? Let's go, Matt. Um, what do you think about the fact that I heard some interesting news at a college station that a commitment named Joseph Osai said that if the defensive uh, coordinator doesn't keep, like, Chavis was supposed to stay there and Jimbo was going to keep him, but now he's not. One of the commitments said he doesn't want to play for Jimbo if he doesn't keep the defensive person on staff that was living on, living on Kevin Sumlin's staff, that he might go to Texas. Yeah, no, Matt, I think we're going to see a lot of that happening, and I think it's one of the reasons why I'm against the early signing period because it's forcing these kids into snapshot decisions. Now, maybe this young man can wait until February to sign, which certainly a lot of players can do, but um, I think we're going to see a lot of that. And, you know, you, you would advise the kid, hey, you commit to the school and not the coaches, but it's hard to say that and really believe it if you're trying to put yourself in, the, in that kid's shoes. Squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> is up next. <laughs> hey, Brian Spears. Thanks for taking my call. Hey, Squirrel. Uh, how you doing, Laura? We be at. Um, I was not able to call in last week. I was on a deer stand, so I had to be quiet. But I sure did enjoy I could listen. And I really enjoyed the show Friday. And um, y'all were a little rough on Jim DiCaprio, weren't you? Uh, I am really going to have to refrain from commenting on that doo doo pending litigation. <laughs> due to pending I litigation. thought you said doo doo for a second. I did. Yeah, I okay. <laughs> Only you the would FBI think of that, though. Yeah, he's squirrel, the FBI. The FBI reference. Mm-hmm. You're right. What were you saying, Law? No, I was I was agreeing with you that, that the FBI reference is really what put him over the edge. And, I mean, Paul, uh, Paul was joking sometimes. Um, People can't take jokes. I mean, wasn't it pretty obvious that well, I, I was joking about it? I mean, would anyone, would anyone seriously think J- Jim would be on the FBI's most wanted list? A guy well, that calls him show one of these day? guys who think there's black helicopters out there, um, <laughs> which they are actually out there. I saw one parked at the Kansas City airport one time, and I walked <laughs> towards it, and everybody said, no, don't go near that helicopter. You'll get arrested. <laughs> but uh, that was a, that's a true story. But, no, I thought you guys were a little rough on him. Uh, and, actually, I, I want to – First, volunteer for the jury. Okay. Second, I want to match Laura's um, bid or quote or uh, whatever she said bucks. she would contribute. Yeah, for the uh, mental health. Well, <laughs> yeah, I felt I felt badly about to. that because that insinuated that he had personality disorders. Well, we know he, well, he does have personality disorders, Paul. I mean, what do you mean insinuate? There's, uh, I mean, le- uh, there, is, there is no evidence of that, over. though, Squirrel. I mean, no conclusive evidence. And here's, hey, Laura, here's something Paul did to me last. Hey, Laura, you want to know something Paul did to me last I week? I do. Boy? Yeah, uh, Jim was on here, and I wanted to have a discussion with Jim, so I called in and asked the guys if I could put me on with Jim, and Paul wouldn't put me on. You know why he said he wouldn't put me on? Why? He says cause of, he said because of the holidays. Oh, because he is really uh, trying to be very hunky he over Jim. here. And that's why when you were mentioning his dog, Trooper, you forgot his other dog, his lab dog. Jim from Tuscaloosa. <laughs> I don't know Thanks what Jim looks my- like because we've had the wrong picture apparently, but I don't think Jim would fit in Paul's lap. Well, he looks like Leonardo. He's a dog. No, 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 Leonardo no, Squirrel. I'm getting. I'm, I'm hearing from you. I'm not trying to over or analyze, but you, you seem to be indicating that I'm soft on Jim. You are soft on Jim, but I'm calling for the ban to be lifted too. Okay. Uh, I think we need to lift the ban on Jim. Well, well here's, here's the most important sufficient. thing. We needed someone, not that we're employing Robert's rules of order here, but we needed someone to, me, to make a formal motion to I lift the ban. The you ban have now done that, and uh, are you seconding? Thank you. No. Oh, Randy is not oh. seconding. So yeah. if we get a second to the motion, uh, we will take that under advisement. Okay. It's been put on record. Okay. And then uh, if Jim will call in and, and not scream and holler 
and apologize to Laura. No, uh, he doesn't owe me any apologies. He's the one that called you an evil bee, so he need, he owes you an apology. I don't want an apology, but okay. I, I'm more referring to some of the things that he said on, on, on Twitter. Oh, I don't. You know what? Uh, here's the thing, Paul. Sticks and stones can break your bones. Words can never hurt you. Jim, say whatever you want about me. It's not going to hurt my feelings. And, in fact, it just makes me smile because it's hilarious. Okay. Then Bring it on. We'll take a short break. More of this program as we continue on a Monday, a week away from Christmas. Welcome back. Uh, glad you were with us. So let's continue with more phone calls. And Nick is in Georgia, and you are next up. Hey, Paul, Laura, how are y'all doing today? Great. How are you? Oh, it's great, great. Look, I want to wish y'all a Merry Christmas, everybody up there. Thank you, Nick. Hey, Paul, I want to second that motion that uh, Squirrel put out. I'll second that motion to bring uh, Jim back. So you want, okay, okay, so the motion has been uh, forwarded and seconded. The motion is now on the table. That uh, there's been a motion to rescind the ban, the permanent lifetime ban on Jim from Tuscaloosa. Oh, I didn't know it's a lifetime. Ban? Oh yeah. Oh okay. All right. We don't. Uh, yeah. We don't like. That came from Randy over there. Yeah, Randy. It's, it's, Randy hit him with the lifetime. Ban. Lifetime ban. All right, Bama Nick. So, what's the next step, Paul? Um, I'm consulting with our attorneys. Oh, got it. Okay, my bad. <laughs> well, we didn't think we didn't well, think we'd get yeah. two people to. Want Jim back, so we weren't. In, 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 in full disclosure, we weren't prepared for this. Yeah, and Randy yeah. and I talked before the show. I said, "Do you think anybody?" Would? And he said, "Not a snowball's chance." And so uh, we are waiting for the legal team, which, by the way, is a little busy today. Um, yep. Can we get somebody from the legal team on line one? No. <laughs> Nobody's answering the phone. Where is everyone? Oh, Sheriff. Okay. Oh, Sheriff is our legal Sheriff, team. can you help us out? Help us, Sheriff. Hey, yes, yes. I'm in line. Bring Jim back, man. He oh. brings, uh, at least he brings more humor to the show. Wait. Man. We're not funny enough without him? The I mean, box. come on. Populi is uh, crying oh, for Jim to come back. Laura, you bring the brains and the prettiness to the show. The, Paul, the, the, Paul okay, so Laura brings the, the uh, brains and I bring the prettiness, huh? Purdy. Uh, yeah, that's Miss. right. That's right. That's a Georgia Look, phrase. I, I'm in. I'm in line with uh, bring Jim back, and I think Law instead of Madden 2018, we need to get a Rutledge 2018 I'll for uh, college I like football. It. Great. I'm a fan, Sheriff. Uh, let okay, me, uh, right. Pastor, Sheriff. That. that that was that. That's in that's in motion right now. Well, so Sheriff was our legal team, and that's what. He wanted as the legal team. I still say that we need a we need a full jury. We need to really vet this out because there are a lot of people out there who might not be happy with us if we just sort of willy nilly. Well, there's also in. some people, Laura, and I shouldn't bring this up, but claim that that you and McElroy and others have uh, have polluted the jury pool. Yeah. Oh, we've ruined everything. They call it jury yeah. nullification. Mm-hmm. And that would be the argument used to rescind the ban, that, that there has been so much interference purposefully mm. and uh, willing, willfully. Uh, and I'm not blaming it on you. Yeah. Well, the one thing I would but say. But I do think everyone here needs to be treated fairly, and I'm, I'm not sure Jim has been treated fairly. Well, and, and the one thing I would say is that I have never, while there have been others who have come out in full support of this ban, I have never commented on it one way or the other. Yeah, I was reporting live from Tuscaloosa. You you did that, and you you used. It's hard to say the word you used in the same sense, <laughs> but but you did uh, your powerful position on, oh, yeah. on social media mm. um, to well. I, and I, I hate to truly, cross cross bear uh, because I mean we, we oh, there are no barriers here, but tr- truly. But I do feel like Jim needs some representation at this table. So. You're saying, let me get this straight for everyone. You're in the gym camp. No, Laura, I am. I am. I am. I am Switzerland here. I think I'm Switzerland. Well, too. you were Switzerland, but one thing I have, I, I feel like we're about to get into a a, a rare public disagreement. But you, the difference between you and me is that this weekend I went away 
and you swam in these shark-infested waters on I Twitter. I love the shark-infested waters. <laughs> now, really what happened is that Legend, who, by the way, Legend calls himself Legend. I have never heard from him on this show. He's never called I, when I, I've been I want to say him. something about Legend here. Yeah. And I, I know Legend, uh, who's a longtime caller of this show, tried this fake mea culpa today apologizing. But I've been reading his tweets uh, about you and this show for a number of weeks. And it's uh, as someone who uh, I've always considered a close friend, and we've been together many, many times. I, I really uh, took it quite personally, and uh, it was completely and totally uncalled for in terms of what he said about you and others around the show. Yeah, which – Everyone's entitled to their own opinion. I, I know, but, According but, to many, I have ruined the show. And I, well, you know, one day a week, by the way. You know, the show lives on when I'm not here and, and it moves but, on quite well it, without but it really, me. But your presence on Monday carries over the whole week. <laughs> Apparently it does <laughs> in a really negative way. Uh, but no, I, so I see your point, though, about how maybe Jim has not been given a fair yeah. shake of things because people are putting it as more of a Jim against the world type thing. Uh, and we don't want it to be that way. No. So I, I think we can all sort of think of a good way to figure out how to handle this. And we are still consulting with the legal team yeah. and trying to figure out what they are now. They are they're now. Uh, they've, they've had a busy day. They're now answering our calls and telling us to call tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. So the situation is tabled until then. Who's on the phone? Larry, what about it? Uh, you're, you're a legal scholar. Absolutely, Miss Brown. Long, Laura, how y'all getting along today? We're great. How are you? Hey, great, great. Hey, I tell you what, y'all deserve a uh, Pulitzer Prize in reporting for uh, that Friday. Uh, I know that was a dangerous assignment, but one thing I think people are overlooking here, Teddy's pretty uh, much of a legal scholar, as you think about it now. Little known fact, but he competed against this old boy in 1937, uh, ex-Supreme Court Judge uh, Byron Wizard White. <laughs> so, I mean, they're contemporaries of both. A Colorado age. player. Now, I can tell you straight up from my sources on Twitter, there was an intervention called for, uh, and they're the, the solid sources out there on Twitter now. It was all at the uh, Bama Beano Pizza Place there in Tuscaloosa, uh, attended by six and a half people. Now, the half might sound strange, but uh, <laughs> not really. This old boy didn't eat, didn't talk. He says, uh, Ted Williams' frozen head, they sit there from California. And the other six is Richard Dyke, <laughs> Cypher. Had his asinine tweets, which nobody could do. And Danny yeah, Sheldon, Richard Deitch and, uh, and 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 Jim have got a pretty good relationship, I think. Well, Deitch tried to tried to get in there and help him. And he did. Danny Sheridan, he did. Dan, yeah, by the way, Danny well. Sheridan tried to help him too. I, uh, my question, though, and maybe uh, Mark and John, I know they're in a different studio, but I wonder, uh, Laura, if we just shouldn't put this to Twitter. I think we should. This is where it all got. This should be a poll. Should we have a? Should a, we poll it? It, it? it may not be binding, but at least it will give us a. An indicator. Yeah. We, want, we may have to put a Twitter poll this out This is there. everyone's show. They need to weigh I in. I agree. In order for the business to keep growing, you have to keep investing. The region's next step project is helping real customers like Eddie confidently take their next step in life and in business. It took a lot of years and just working hard, but Regions never came up on us. Ready to take your next step? Visit regions.com slash next step. Well, we're in a great place, and we're ready to take our next step. Regions, official bank of the SEC, member FDIC, paid appearance by an actual Regions customer telling his real story. This week, tune in to the Paul Feinbaum Show as I discuss... The delicious taste of ice cold, Dr. Pepper! Larry Culpepper? Hey, I'm in the middle of a promo! Sorry, Finey. The fans are craving so much Dr. Pepper, I thought I'd borrow some of your air time. Security! Hey, look, whether you're watching college football or calling to some guy's radio show, Dr. Pepper makes college football that much sweeter. So head to your local Dollar General and grab some today. Can I have one of yours? Hey, we got a caller. You're on the Larry Culpepper Show with your host, Larry Culpepper. That's it! That's Dr. Pepper, the one fans crave! We welcome you to the second hour. The uh, poll is live. Should uh, the ban be lifted right now, uh, Laura? Uh, Last check. Uh, well, let's see. I voted. I won't reveal <laughs> you did which way, but it was. I'm not revealing which way I voted. Because um, I'm supposed to be. I got to be impartial here, right? Uh, I actually. I, I don't know if you're. All right. All right. Fine. I'll reveal it. I'll reveal it. For the sake no, of the show. No, we're not going to let you reveal it. Oh, well, you just wanted me to reveal it. No. For the sake of the show, I voted. That the ban should be lifted. Oh, okay. And I will stand by that. I've always thought you were a smart person. I'm not. I'm not going to cast. You're my not going to vote. vote. Well, it's your vote. It's yeah. your poll. 
Uh, I will uh, ultimately sit in judgment, but, but, I, will, but I will say the early indicators, that that's a it's pretty positive even. number for Jim. It, well, it's pretty even. It was yeah. like 45-55 last I checked. We got about 300 votes. So we'll keep you updated, but in the meantime, we'll talk to everybody else. Okay. You know? I, I'm happy. I, I just I, – I'm, I'm trying – not to let Christmas affect. You are feeling really jolly these days. I've noticed a change in you. I'm a, what's I the, think it's because you ate a lot of fruitcake. <laughs> yeah, it's a holly jolly Christmas. It's Yeah, I don't know. I, I just get into the Christmas. Don't you? Yeah, well, uh, my thing, I mean, whether it's Christmas or not, this, what makes this show great, and, and hey, I know all those of you out there who've been around longer than me, around this show, I get it. I don't know anything. <laughs> but the one thing I know is that this show is excellent because it's a family. And, yes, we talk sports, and, yes, we, we spend time on all of the important things, but – it's a family atmosphere, and and it's there are times <laughs> there are times at Christmas or any time where you have issues with your family, and you gotta stone. you gotta work through them. So maybe that's where we are. It's 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 like Festivus. Okay, <laughs> exactly. let's grab some more calls. Elliot in Columbia, Missouri. Hi, Mr. Feinbaum. Hi, Mrs. Rutledge. Hey there, Elliot. Okay, so I'm here. Hey, how about uh, didn't didn't we meet you together in we Missouri? Did. I remember yeah, it. So, uh, so you guys know me, but for the people who don't know me, which is most of the people listening to this call, uh, right. I'm 15 years old, and I want to talk about Jim being banned. Okay. So, a few days ago, I tweeted at Jim, Mr. Feinbaum, and I said to Mr. Feinbaum that if he banned Jim from the show, he should unfollow Jim, too. And shortly after, he blocked me, and I'm a 15 year old. So the funny thing is, I think he actually visited my page. And saw I was 15 and still blocked. He, uh, yeah. uh, so, Elliot, uh, you're 15 years old. You live in Columbia, Missouri. Um, and Jim blocked you on Twitter? Yes, he did. It's rather disturbing evidence here against Jim. Wow. Elliot, uh, I'd like to be the first to officially welcome you to the Blocked Club. <laughs> <laughs> We're glad yeah, to have yeah. you. Hey, We're going to have a party later on Elliot, uh, this uh, year. Probably a more serious question I have to ask you is this. Why, why would you, as, as a 15-year-old Missourian, be following Jim from Tuscaloosa? I wasn't following him. He wasn't following him. Yeah. I, I was so just, explain I to Ms. Tamika, uh, uh, you, how do you find out you are blocked by someone? Oh, you, get a, you get like a notification. Is that after you've already you followed them? Or, yeah. So if you're following me and I decide to so – Don't you'll you get dare a block me. I'm on to you. No, Elliot, you go to their page, right? And that's how you see that you were blocked? Okay. Well, yeah, I was trying to comment on something, and I saw that he blocked me. So. <laughs> he blocked you before you even tried to follow him? <laughs> no, he was yeah. trying to comment. Oh. Pre-block. Preemptive block. Elliot, he knew you were trouble. <laughs> see, I've, I've, I have talked to Jim before about blocking people. I don't think it's a good idea. Yeah. So, I mean, someone's right? harassing you, yeah. Totally. But... No one ever we were all just trying to I, I have am, a little bit I have fun. never criticized on Twitter. Most people say very nice things about me. Um, yeah, me too. Everyone loves me. Oh. No. Woo. Legend. Okay. Anyway. So I have a few words for Jim. Yeah, go ahead. I know, I know he's watching because she's always watching the show. Oh, sure. So what else is there things, to watch at this time of the day? Yeah, so things change. The game of base, uh, basketball changed. Now people shoot more threes. Hockey has changed. They've had rule changes. Um, the game of football has even changed, especially college football with the playoffs and everything that's changed. Right. So everything changes, everything evolves, but it doesn't mean that these sports are awful now. It just means that they've evolved. And sometimes that's for the better. And this applies to the Fine Bomb show, too. And I believe that this show has changed for the so better. So let me ask you this, Elliot. Uh, what would your recommendation be? Uh, you're a 15 year old, young, young, from the younger part of our listening and viewing audience, would you be in favor of letting him come back or just let him rot on the vine? Um, well, here's the thing. Um, I think I, I've heard him be kind over the years. So I think if he apologizes, and, but the thing is. Yeah. Um, well, you know, uh, let, let me let me try to relate to you, even though there's a couple of years of de- uh, in, in age difference. Uh, when I was brought up, and I bet Laura had the same thing. If you apologize and if you are remorseful, then usually you could get out of most anything outside of murder. Um, so 
is that where we're going here, Elliot? I mean, here's the thing. Um, I really look up to you, Mr. Feinbaum. You're my hero, and you truly inspire me. And you know, whenever Jim is calling you these names, um, mm-hmm. it kind of um, it bothers me, and it gets personal. And kind of. Have you seen what life. he's uh, had to say about uh, Mrs. Rutledge? <laughs> Can't believe I'm using yeah, that. Uh, I look up to her too. But, um, I mean, I, I, I think he has been harsher on Mrs. Rutledge than than, than, than even me. Yeah, because I mean I'm I'm really no, I mean Elliot thank you very much for the call. Thank I mean, you Elliot. I mean I appreciate I like that. That means a lot. a lot. But I I'm part I'm I'm part of the I'm I'm a piñata. That's part mm-hmm. of my job here. But you're you're so here in I. a different role. You're not here to be uh what do you call it when you get the the oh when you get whacked. Only after an on-air apology also should be on a short leash after that. I mean like a literally literally on a leash. <laughs> We would never be able to tie him down. Jim is a man of his own. Don't don't mess with Mrs. Rutledge. Here's the thing, though. Um, me and Mrs. Rutledge. Paul, <laughs> me and Mrs. Jones. I know I, that was a wrong tune. I have a hard time remembering tunes, but anywho, you were um, pretty close. You know, the one Same thing place? is, I, Same I am cafe. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm just happy to be on this show, so yeah. I'm never gonna. I can be a pinata too. Bring it on! But you don't and, and need a lot to be one. Time, but that's okay. I mean, I'm I, kind of the uh, that, that comes with the territory. But you, you bring something else to the show. Well, I here's you bring the thing. sunshine. You have on a to, rainy day. to be to be on this show. You know what comes with it, and that's why we are all a family. We're kind of crazy, we all are. of us at times, and mm-hmm. and we do beat up on each other a little bit. But I'm I'm with you. M- maybe okay. we get an apology and we. See where we go. Yeah, and we by the way, update I, the poll. I know it's not like I'm, I'm legal counsel here for the the save the Jim save the whale foundation or whatever, but <laughs> the Ted Williams. Foundation. I, I just think we need a clarification because Jim yeah. is not an apology guy. No, he won't apologize. No, so I I'm I'm going to make it easy for you, Jim. Yeah. A clarification of, of 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 status here. But anyway, enough of that. We're not big. Ba- okay, this is the question we put on Twitter. That is social media for some of you. Uh, on Fine Bomb Friday, Jim in Tuscaloosa was banned indefinitely. Should the ban be lifted? That's very simple. It's a straight up yes or no vote, and we will update you uh, sh- shortly when we have some. Uh, I mean, the return. I'm I mean, these, these are these are mainly have... uh, these are mainly like the rural counties mm-hmm. coming in right now. We haven't yeah. we haven't gotten to the bigger forty four right now. Forty four percent say that the ban should be lifted out of one thousand. That's, that's, that's quite a bit. I mean, Jim, you got fans. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Uh, but, you know, Paul, we do have some football to talk about. We do. And Bobby is up next. How you Bobby. doing, Nate, buddy? How are you, man? How you doing, Law? I am great. It is so great to hear from you. I'm listening to the college football. It's you and me. Law. Hey, Law. Hey. I can tell when you're on the show. I don't even have to hear you or see you. I watch Paul reach over there in that white coffee cup. Get him a bit and put his glasses on. I said, "Loud on the show today." <laughs> you so you, are you are you suggesting, uh, Bobby, that that I act differently around her? Yeah. Is that what you're suggesting yeah. here? That maybe yeah. I act like. It's fun to have your friend around. Uh, hey, y'all can't choose between Clemson and Alabama. Well, I can. Laura can't. She said I'm not this is alla- impossible. I'm, I'm not allowed to, Bobby, because we like to preserve. Uh, our professionalism on the game, and I will be on the game hmm. on the Alabama well, sideline. So, so you're well, for Alabama, my, then? <laughs> my money on Alabama. Yeah, well, I'm my, Bobby, my money's where your money is. I'm a, I'm a me too. Shooter. Secretly, don't tell anyone. Bobby, don't hey, tell Randy, on me. I don't see I don't see Randy that much, but I told Randy, Randy, no scared money won't win with the Randy. That's right. That's right. He says, Bobby. Right. I know it. Bring it, Bobby. Hey, I ain't gonna hold y'all today. I'm gonna say this then, I'm gonna let you go. That fella, that fella from Tuscaloosa, and that fella up there on Pennsylvania Avenue, they got the same problem John Gotti had. And John Gotti brought down the whole Gambino crime, man. They talk too damn much. And John, John Gotti slept with the fish, didn't he? Didn't they mow him down at a restaurant? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or did he die in jail? I can't remember. Oh, he died in jail. Should have, should have died in a restaurant. Yeah. Te- what <laughs> was that? They Teflon missed a good opportunity Don? There. 
Yeah, yeah they call it. He was a famous uh, mobster that uh, ratted out the Gambino family. Can't believe he Bad move. This. Yeah. You got to let those Gambinos just keep going. I always liked the Gambino family. They were good for uh, they, yeah. they were, they, You well, were entrenched with them. I, I was their... Paul, you could have been, you could be a good mobster. You are just coy enough for What do they that. call the lawyer? The consig... Uh, consigliere. Consigliere? Yeah. I, st- I had a hard time with it. Consigliere. I once called it the consigliere. <laughs> <laughs> to a tongue of Iloa, consigliere. Yeah. Anyway, uh, we're, we're back with more. We're, we're just off. Bo Bounds, Mississippi's gangster. Oh, yeah. He will be with us shortly. I just saved hundreds of dollars by switching to GEICO. I'm so happy, I feel like I can fly. Disclaimer, you will not be able to fly by switching to GEICO. This is against the laws of physics and nature. If you find yourself flying, please seek professional and or medical help immediately. In the unlikely event you find yourself flying, you might be a superhero or a pigeon or a superhero named Pidge Woman who was bitten by a radioactive pigeon. If you are indeed Pidge Woman, GEICO retains all licensing publishing rights in the event Pidge Woman the movie becomes a top-grossing Hollywood blockbuster. GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Welcome back to the program. We are happy to have everyone here. Bo Bounds, uh, the voice of Mississippi. The whole state. The entire state. <laughs> I think he really is. Bo, uh, how's everything going? Welcome to the show. Uh, just a quiet off season in the state of Mississippi. Two coaching announcements. Good afternoon to you. Paul, Laura, how are y'all doing? Yeah, it has been wild. I mean, bizarre that... Uh... The, the biggest story, one of the biggest stories in college football went through our state for months and months with the whole Hugh Freeze deal. So it's crazy that Freeze and Mullen are no longer as successful as they were. Obviously, one left and parlayed it into an elite job, and the other one left under scrutiny and scandal. But it's crazy that we've got Moorhead and Luke now instead of uh, Mullen and Freeze, who led the two schools to New Year's Six Bowl games and inside the top five. Well, let me ask you to assess both hires. Joe Moorhead, I think to win at, at MSU and Ole Miss and Arkansas type programs, Paul, you have to be innovative and creative on offense, and you have to have a dual threat and all that kind of good stuff. You have to have a playmaker on the offensive side of the football. So I think it's a good hire. Luke is interesting, Paul, because late in the year they didn't quit on him. He loses to Cal, blows the big lead to Arkansas, but yet he beat Kentucky. Vanderbilt and won the Egg Bowl. And he's one of them and played under Tuberville and all that kind of stuff. So I guess that played to some of the boosters in Ross Bjork. Either that or no one was taking Bjork's call because of the probation that was hanging over the program. So I'll, I'll go wait and see on Luke, but he does have 12 games on his back, and he did win six. Hmm. Yeah, I would say it's more about uh, the impending NCAA sanctions at that point for Matt Luke. But, Bo, winning the Egg Bowl always helps, as you know, in that great state of Mississippi. Uh, how about the bowl game for Mississippi State? Louisville, of course, has Lamar Jackson. We wish we were seeing Nick Fitzgerald. Nick Fitzgerald we're not. Uh, but what are, what's your take on this game? Laura, I think it's going to be a train wreck. Um, an interim running back coach, you know, and Greg Knox is a nice guy who coached at Ole Miss and Auburn and Mississippi State as the interim head coach going against one of the best uh, offensive guys in the country, if not the best, and one of the best exes and those guys in Katrina. And you mentioned Lamar Jackson. So I don't see – and they're playing a freshman QB at MSU. So I don't see how in the world they stay on the field with Louisville. Um, they have more talent than Louisville, but Louisville has a better head coach and a better quarterback. In the game, I mean, a much better head coach and a much better quarterback in the game. So I think this could get away from them down in Jacksonville, uh, and it could it could get away from them early. Their only shot is to run the football all day long and keep Jackson off the field. Chatting with Bo Bounds here uh, about the state of Mississippi. Bo, let me let me switch to Ole Miss. First of all, we haven't spoken to you since the sanctions came down. Uh, I'm curious where, where you think it landed and also not only how, how you think Matt Luke will do, but uh, do you think Hugh Freeze will find a job anytime soon? Well, that's a great question. I think the sanctions were the, the ball ban, another year the ball ban was devastating for recruiting and losing Shea Patterson. 
Van Jefferson, De- Deontay Anderson type players, Paul. But and I, and I think that, but scholarship wise, they survived. I mean, I think a lot of people thought it could get into twenty, twenty two, twenty five scholies, and it didn't. So Luke will be able to bounce back from that. The only problem is next year's bowl game. They're appealing, but those usually don't work out. Um, as you know, Ole Miss is, is a fascinating deal because they they went through all these big time players, Paul, and they they sent some players to the NFL. And last year's recruiting class was not good, and right now they're ranked 62nd in the country last. I don't think Ole Miss has ever come close to finishing last in the in the SEC since we've been keeping up with this since the, since the 2000s. <laughs> So you can't win unless you're in the top 30. We all know that, right? And then you've got Bama and Georgia. Well, you know, they're all in the top 10. But you can't compete unless your composite recruiting classes are in the top 30 or top 25. So I think that's a devastating blow for Old Miss, depending on how far they can move up. But I don't think it's, it's much further. Yeah, Bo, it's fascinating because when I was covering recruiting, we saw sort of a shift toward Ole Miss in, in having their edge and, okay, say what you want about why that was, but it happened. Now, what do you see the shift going maybe toward Mississippi State and, and how does that factor in just the dynamics within the state for the prospects that are there in the state of Mississippi that can choose between one of these two schools? Well, yeah, Laura, MSU has taken advantage of last year's recruiting class in 2017 and this year's with National Signing Day Wednesday. They're going to sign the bulk of the top 15 players. Now, 2019, Ole Miss landed some commits, but this will be two recruiting classes in a row, one that finished outside the top 35 last year. This one may finish outside the 50. Um, it is going to be you know, a pretty big blow for Ole Miss as far as the trenches and so on. So Matt Luke, starting next year, when he gets to kind of reset, he is going to have to get after it. But this state is loaded for 2019. Saban will be in here. Uh, Ogeron will be in here. Malzahn, Jimbo, Ed Tiger, everybody will be in here because this class for next year, the 2019, is loaded with national guys where Bama and FSU Georgia and A&M will be fighting the dogs and the rebels for several players in this state. Finally, Bo, on that on the subject of, of Ole Miss and, and Matt Luke, um, I, I'm I'm wondering what you think or or do you think he would have gotten the job had no. Ole Miss? Okay, pick it up and right, tell us who would have gotten it. Well, I, if Ole Miss, look, they've got plenty of money. Everybody in the league has money. So Matt Luke was not going to, I mean, Matt wasn't even offensive coordinator. I mean, 20 years he's been as an offensive line coach, and there's nothing wrong with that. But Hugh Freeze fired Dan Warner last year and had a chance to promote Matt Luke and didn't. He went out and, and hired a guy that we had never heard of in Phil Longo. Hmm. So without the probation and the NCAA investigation, Matt Luke doesn't get the job because Ole Miss has three and a half to four and a half million dollars plus to spend on going and get a new another coach, whether it's a G five or a big time P five coordinator. So no Matt doesn't get the job. It'll be interesting to see if he can make it. Probably not, but he'll get a couple of years to uh, to try to make this work. The problem Paul is last year's signing class and this year's signing class may not help him stay in that six to eight wins per year space that you need to at programs like this. Great stuff. Listen, Bo, appreciate your time. As always, have a great uh, holiday, and we will see you very soon. Thanks, Bo. Thanks, Paul. Take care. Thanks, uh, Thanks, Bo Bounds. I just sent Bo a new phone for us for Christmas as well. Yeah, you know, it's funny, though, because the, the amount of times where you can think that your phone has great reception, and then you call into this show, and something happens. Yeah, I don't know, and, and I've talked to you. On, I mean, no matter where, if, you, if you're not in the right spot, oh, it doesn't matter where, whether you have a phone that you got in the I mean, Sports I, Illustrated I was, uh, <laughs> subscription like mine or, or yours. Yeah, I was calling from the Tuscaloosa Country Club the other day, and I Sound, thought it would come through pretty clearly, it, well, and it didn't sound great, I don't think. It didn't sound great, but there wasn't a lot of other cell phone activity from the Country True, Club, so it had, it had a over there. crisp sound. 
got to cut through. Hey, Bo brought up a really good point about Matt Luke. And I think we all know, and, and this is not meant to take anything away from Matt Luke because he's taken on a tough job there. And it sure. may be his dream job at his dream school, but it came with some issues, to say the least. But Hugh Freeze, who say what you want about him off the field, is an exceptional coach yes. and I think made some great hires during his time there. He had an opportunity to promote Matt Luke within and went out and got Phil Longo, who was able to do pretty well with what he had, considering that Shea Patterson went down early in the season. But, man, I mean, you saw what that offense looked like in the Egg Bowl. Uh, no, we, it we had talked, a lot to do with uh, we, we, we talked about it earlier uh, on, on another show um, uh, in the situation with uh, Cristobal at, at Oregon. And this was a strange hire. I understand it. I think Ross Bjork had a pretty clear window into the future that he was going to get slammed. Mm-hmm. And if they had waited to the sanctions and then searched the country and ended up with someone who nobody had ever heard of, it would it would it would have been a worse look. I'll say this. I don't know how many options they had, but... You had to win the Egg Bowl, too. So yeah. they really lucked out that yeah. Matt Luke won the Egg Bowl. That's a very difficult sell to make to this proud Ole Miss fan base if you hadn't won the Egg Bowl. Um, it, it felt I, – I did that game. It felt on the field like that meant even more than a normal Egg Bowl would mean, and, and there are reasons why you could point to that. I think even more from the administration standpoint, that was a big help. Yeah, I mean, had they lost the game, the, the only, I think their best option then would have been – the less miles type of route. I'm yeah. not saying specifically him, but someone who is out of coaching and, okay, I'm going to get my head handed to me, but I, but it's still better than sitting at home and watching the Feinbaum well, show every afternoon. <laughs> okay, uh, no offense to your show. Is it, uh, is it better? I mean, I, I would say that I'm not sure if, if taking on that job with the sanctions but, and, and what Bo was just talking about, already they've fallen a couple years behind in recruiting. That's so tough to come Laura, back you, from. you know many ex-coaches. They, they just want to That's coach. true. Uh, Good point. And, and I think that would you – know, some would not. I've talked to uh, people that we work with, and they, they said, no, there's no way I would take that job. But, yeah. but I, I think less, and I'm not speaking for him, although maybe I should. It would be easier to understand. Um, <laughs> come on. He, would, he probably would have taken the job. I, I think less would have. Yeah. So that would be a good, a good example. But <laughs> How much fun would that have been? I would have loved it. <laughs> We're joined by Les Miles, the head coach at Ole Miss. What do you guys want? <laughs> What's going on, guys? <laughs> Time down. Down. I told you I'm not – I told you I'm not talking to you anymore. We'll be right back. You said that a lot. Glad you are back with us. We talked about the Mississippi State a minute ago. We'll talk about the other side of that game with Gentry Estes from the Courier Journal. Gentry, uh, seems like we haven't talked in about two jobs ago, but it's always great to catch up with you. How are you? Yeah, I'm good, Paul. Good to talk with you. We were before we get to the game. Let me ask you. Uh, we were talking about Lamar Jackson. What do, what do you hear in terms of his future? Well, I think most people would be shocked if he was to come back next year. Um, you know, he hasn't said that yet, obviously. he's uh, He is going to play in the bowl game. He's made that clear from the start. So he has said all along that he didn't want to really get into all that until after the bowl game. Even. Um, but uh, you're talking about a program that the same weekend that Lamar was a Heisman finalist, uh, there was a banner unveiled on the side of the stadium saying thank you to Lamar Jackson. Hmm. Uh, uh, by the way, uh, I just saw that's one of those indicator. outside here thanking me. Uh oh, Paul, bad sign, <laughs> or maybe good sign. <laughs> Moving on to the next best thing. Uh, hey, Gentry, when you have seen the way that Lamar Jackson has just played over this time, and maybe we are putting a punctuation mark on his career, he's already done so much. How do you try and limit him? I mean, I, I haven't seen many defenses in Louisville games that I've covered be able to do it. No, I mean clearly he's. Uh, a special case for any team trying to, to play Louisville. I, I think the teams that gave Louisville trouble this year, you know, and, and for lack of a better time, I mean, other than Clemson, who I think pretty much dominated Louisville, everybody else just kind of outscored them. Uh, they were able to take advantage of Louisville's defense. Uh, I think Louisville's defense has improved as the season's gone along, but, I mean, you know what you're getting when you're going against Lamar Jackson. He's a guy that uh, he is – Believe it or not, he didn't get a lot of attention for it this year, but he can improve in several key areas this year as opposed to the year he won the Heisman. Uh, a little bit more effective as a pocket passer now. Uh, he doesn't just take off and run every time. And I think you've seen him be able to do that a little more efficiently. I think pro scouts have noticed that. Uh, and I think it's made Louisville's offense 
a bit tougher to deal with, although he doesn't quite have some of the same weapons around him that maybe he had last season. I, I think, you know, it's very clear when you look at the numbers and you look at Louisville's team, it's a one-man show, and it was for, for a lot of the season. So I'm not sure anybody could take him away, but I think if you can limit what he's able to do, the rest of the offense is going to have a hard time making up for that. Talking to Gentry Estes. Gentry, it's interesting. So many things have happened in Louisville. Not that I, you need me to tell you that, though, with uh, Tom Jurich gone and the basketball program. But uh, what about Bobby Petrino? Because he was so closely aligned with the AD. Many wondered if he would look uh, for an exit strategy. I realize he's still there, but uh, what is his status? You know, Paul, I wondered that, too. I mean, I think everybody did. When you saw what happened to Tom Jurich, yeah, absolutely. Very closely aligned. He's called him a close friend. I mean, clearly, he would have rather Tom Jurich stay on as the AD at Louisville. That didn't happen. So you immediately wonder... And not just with Bobby Petrino, but with a lot of the coaches at Louisville, you wonder how that was going to be received. Um, in Petrino's case, you, you did kind of go every day, Paul, and, and wonder if his name going to pop up. I mean, you had Tennessee and some others, and it just never did. Now, I, I don't know if that's a matter of uh, the result of him not being interested or people not being interested in him. Hmm. Yeah, uh, I, I personally, I kept thinking his name would pop up at least somewhere. It was surprising to me that it didn't, Gentry. Um, it, we've been talking a lot about early signing period. I'm wondering from your perspective and just in preparation for this bowl, if you've heard any of the Louisville coaches commenting on it and what they've said about it. Um, you know, it's interesting about, about this bowl game. Uh, we were robbed of what would have been a fantastic matchup had Todd Grantham still been the defensive coordinator at Mississippi State. Um, instead, you know, Dan Mullen goes to Florida. He goes with him to Florida. So it would have been fascinating. I don't know if you know, but at the end of last season, Louisville and Mississippi State traded defensive coordinators. And right. So many words. <laughs> right. Peter Sermon is the defensive coordinator at Louisville with Mississippi State last year. Grantham goes to Starkville. Um, you know, now he goes to Florida, so you knew that on the front end with this bowl matchup, and that took away what would have been a really nice storyline. I think as it is now, hey, the storyline would probably, at least from Louisville's perspective, center around Lamar Jackson. Uh, I, I think most people would concede this is probably going to be his last game at Louisville. And honestly, I, I have a hard time seeing them losing it just because of Lamar Jackson. I think that's going to mean a lot to people up here. I, I am curious, uh, off off the bowl game, but life after Patino, uh I know the Kentucky game's coming up in a couple of days, about a week and a half, two weeks. What What is the, the mood around that program right now? Well, they, they've, they've played okay so far. Uh, you're talking about a team that has hovered in the top 25, <laughs> dropped out a little recently, got a, um, got a significant win over Indiana uh, about a week ago. And, um, you know, they have David Padgett as the interim coach. Uh, younger coach, he was an assistant on Patino's staff. Uh, he's continued a lot of what uh, Patino was doing there. Uh, he hired Trent Johnson off the ball, who is the former coach at LSU, oh, yeah. um, who I thought was a really good assistant hire for him, uh, especially in his situation. I think he's been a, a good influence. I mean, you know, watching them play, it's hard to, to really be able to tell. I think it has been, so far at least, a pretty, uh, uh, all, all things considered, a decent transition. They've they've been able to keep things together, but you know you're not into ACC play yet. I, this, this, there's still a lot of talent there, though. I, I think that's a tournament team. Uh, you know, clearly they're they're going to miss having a Hall of Fame coach on the sideline in some form. But I think the team this year is probably going to be pretty good. The, the trouble is going to be down the road when the the hits are going to take and recruiting becomes uh, you know manifests itself over the next few years. Gentry, always a, always a pleasure to uh, catch up. Uh, enjoy the bowl game if that's possible. This time of the year, some of these games just kind of run together. But uh, it is always it's always good to talk to you, and we will talk very soon, I hope. You bet. Take care, Paul. Good stuff. Gentry Estes uh, covering the Louisville Cardinal. A lot going, uh, like going on at that school. We will take a short break. We'll give you an update on the, uh, the lift or no lift ban. Mm. A lot of support coming in from the urban areas now. Always it's wanted, coming in in droves. I always wanted to do election night. Yeah, you'd be great at that. I would. Pointing at all the different... <laughs>
definitely looking into that. You have great spatial awareness. I, I do. What kind of awareness? Let's continue, uh, get some reaction, and uh, we are now uh, a little bit north of Montgomery, Alabama, right now with, uh, with Iman. Iman, go right ahead. Hey, good afternoon, Paul. Laura, how y'all doing this What's fine, up, beautiful I'm day? What's up, Iman? You know what? I had the best weekend. Did you? And, and I you tell too. you what, Friday, Friday's show from the second hour on blew up, and I don't know that it's ever stopped. That That is one long Friday for me, and it's continuing on till today. You know, I heard somebody say, well, was somebody second that to let Jim back on? Now, you can't have in order to have a second, it has to be a continuous conversation. Like mm-hmm. Paul saying, okay, I first it, and then somebody's got to I, I second it. Well, that did not happen. So you, there's no seconds here. There's no guessing. But the thought of Jim having to live through Friday night, Saturday, Saturday night, Sunday, Sunday night, and into Monday evening, knowing he's banned and how that's eating at him and going through his mind like maggots, it's just its an amazing thought. And it's so damn funny. It is so funny that this guy, you know, he thinks he controls everything. But, Laura, when you gave that interview over at the country club, you know, the abandoned country club with all the plaster falling down and no pictures on the wall, just the stains where the pictures used to be, and that crazy old fella running down through the hallway with a cell phone, the golf club, uh, you know, I, it sounded like he was Tiger Woods going to beat himself up with a golf club. That was just the funniest stuff. Did he knock himself out? I'm sure he did. You, you know, that is that was the most hilarious thing I've heard on this program. And I've been listening to you, Paul. Hell, you had hair when I started listening to this program. That's mm-hmm. a long time. You didn't have but two, what do you think this but is you now? had two. <laughs> them, them sides, that's just, that's bank. That hey, no, <laughs> it's real, I man. I promise you it's real. <laughs> Oh, so he got one of them things off TV, what, at 3 o'clock I, in the I morning? I finally broke down I bought, I bought, I, about 3 o'clock in the morning on the, on TBS. I bought one of those things. And, and you got two free and shipping. That's all you did. You paid shipping. You got I paid uh, shipping. I, I got the Christmas discount. You Deli- got the, how many times have you heard this? We'll and, deliver and, before Christmas and, if you order now. And then Nineteen ninety nine. And then if you, if you do it With it, you get the, the Bee Gees' greatest hits. Yeah, and it, on, on the nineteenth of every month, you get you get the new the news the new Knights of Broadway shot, right here bottle of sap. That I, all this has been the funniest weekend I can remember. It was a great weekend, now, I know, have to tell you. I, you know, I don't now, remember now, a better now, weekend. Do you? Just, it, it was just so funny. He had to live through it. Well, I mean, I mean, had some great moments on Twitter too this weekend, which, uh, that's the great thing about this show, right? I mean, it kind of lives on. It was hard in to other do. It worlds. was hard to get any Christmas shopping done between oh, no. looking. I mean, I'm, I'm literally walking into people at the mall. You do that anyway. You know, and, and, and you know, don't just don't walk in the fountain with that new hair. You know, it could disappear. But you know, <laughs> it, 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 the way Jim comes on, I don't know if I'm for the ban or not. But just knowing he can't call is just the funniest thing. Did you but vote in the poll, I man? Did you vote in the poll? Uh, I haven't seen the poll. Is it on Twitter? It's on. It's on. Paul. It's, on uh, it's on the Twitter right now. On the Twitter. Oh, yeah, I'll have to go find it because, you know, it's a funny thing. Jim's the guy that encouraged me to get on Twitter. And and so, absolutely, I'm going to go vote. But, you know, I will say this. If if Jim wants to come back, you know, Jim's got to humble himself from being this demanding well, I think we all should. I mean, that's what I, I, mean, I, I think we have to be humble. And, and We do. And Jim's a – listen, I do know Jim's a very religious man. So you know, we talked about that privately. And I'm, Thanks, I'm, I mean. I think maybe he'll – Maybe I'm wishful thinking here. I'm no, an you know what? I, at heart. I, Jim, there have been some times where Jim has had some great moments and some great what calls. Did he call? and, and, uh, um, what, what, what did we do? Uh, he called a couple about a week or two ago. We had some some great conversation. I don't even remember what it was. I, and he, uh, we don't always all have to get along. Like I'll be the first to say that. Like let's we can argue about things, we can debate things, but I, I think what most people have a problem with is just the name calling at you. I mean, you are the reason. You are this show, obviously. Your name's all over the thing. You, <laughs> you yeah, are this. I was you about, I was about to say that, that this is really not about. Uh, wait, um, but. Where is it? All it's, there. Uh, you got to go the other way. No, no, no. There you go. Yep. It's not about me. <laughs> 
It's all about you, and you can't call the host an evil bee. You just can't. You can't call the what? You can't call the host, oh, the host. an evil bee. <laughs> did you think I called you a bad name? I did. I, did. I, I would never. It, it was pretty funny. Uh, Linda is next. Yes. Preach it, sister, girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, girl. I <laughs> girlfriend. <laughs> I heard you talking for about a minute before Paul said my name. <laughs> oh, goodness. Uh, your name was at the tip of my tongue. I just haven't said that name in a couple of hours. <laughs> hey, I just wanted to you say, share, first You of share all, a name with his wife. Did you know that, Linda? Yeah, yes, I knew his wife was. That, that's Linda, always so uh, it's always a good move if, if, if you're going to name, if you're going to have friends that are that are women. As long if they're the <laughs> same name as your wife, you never get you can't yeah. get in trouble. True, that's right. But first of all, I want to say Merry Blessed Christmas to everyone there at the SEC Network and all across the board at ESPN. So I got that out of the way. You too. So uh, anyway, you look lovely today. Uh, I love your threads, uh, Laura. You haven't been the same since you you stopped wearing that shower curtain, though. (laughs) I need to bring that back. I saw that thing in my – no, it was a couch, remember? Yeah, right. I saw it in my closet, and I was – Tempted to break it out, uh, but I got to save it for a rainy day when we need something entertaining. Today I went with a Victorian look. <laughs> yes, you look very lovely. I don't know what this okay. is. <laughs> a doily. Now listen, this is a doily. Uh, as far as the gym thing, I was going to say no comment. I plead the fifth, and I refused to answer that question on the grounds it might incriminate me. Mm. But anyway, I don't think that – I think he should call in – and uh, I heart felt. Hate to run, uh, Linda. We are up against the break. We'll be right back. In order for the business to keep growing, you have to keep investing. The region's next step project is helping real customers like Eddie confidently take their next step in life and in business. It took a lot of years and just working hard, but Regions never gave up on us. Ready to take your next step? Visit regions.com slash next step. Well, we're in a great place, and we're ready to take our next step. Regions, official bank of the SEC, member FDIC, paid appearance by an actual Regions customer telling his real story. This week, tune in to the Paul Feinbaum Show as I discuss... The delicious taste of ice cold, Dr. Pepper! Larry Culpepper? Hey, I'm in the middle of a promo! Sorry, Finey. The fans are craving so much Dr. Pepper, I thought I'd borrow some of your air time. Security! Hey, look, whether you're watching college football or calling to some guy's radio show, Dr. Pepper makes college football that much sweeter. So head to your local Dollar General and grab some today. Can I have one of yours? Hey, we got a caller! You're on the Larry Culpepper Show with your host, Larry Culpepper. That's it! That's Dr. Pepper, the one fans crave! Glad you were with us. A lot of interesting uh, developments today, but a good guest as well. Andy Staples, one of our favorites during this holiday season. Let's welcome in <laughs> the one and only Andy Staples to our program. Andy, man, you, you just always pop up there. I do, and I'm, I'm glad I haven't been banned like Jim from Tuscaloosa, or is he... Is he not banned? I was well, trying did to follow you, along. Did you vote in the poll, Andy? Because we have uh, put this out to the people because we don't want to be the ones making the decision here. The, the people are telling us as of last check, 60-40 mm-hmm. is the percentage of people wanting him to stay banned. Uh, he, he's been pretty mean to me through the years. Has he really? When yeah. I've come on. So, yeah, I, I have not voted yet. So my vote is still available to be bought. Breaking right. news. Oh, Early 50% exit of polls. the precincts reporting. We are now getting to the bigger cities in the state. Uh, Jim is still not doing very well. Two I'm glad you hours. had practice with this last week, Paul. By the way, just he for the record, well. Andy, uh, I voted earlier. I rode a horse to the polling. I, I hope your form was better than Roy Moore's. I mean, why would we think he was referring to Roy Moore? My goodness. Um, anyway, uh, two hours until voting closes. So, Andy, as soon as you finish up, I'm fully expecting your vote to be cast. Well, I, I mean, I want to hear from Andy, Jim on Twitter. I want him to. I want him to state his case. Come on, Jim, state uh, your one, case. One, one last question before I get to the good stuff. Do you follow him on Twitter? No, I think I've muted him. So he may oh. be stating his case, and Unmute. I just may not hear it. You're missing so some great stuff. I will unmute, but yeah, he called me some fairly nasty names through the years, so it's going to be hard to win Join my the vote club. Hey, Andy, <laughs> I didn't realize that, but uh, I should have deducted that since you're a guest on this evil cesspool show, then yes. you probably uh, would, would come in mm. for that criticism. Let me ask you about something else that's come in for a, a lot of criticism, and that's the early signing period. Uh, where are you on all of the noise and, and what's going to happen this week? Usually anything the coaches hate, I, I assume, is going to be better for the players. 
and all the coaches hate this. So I, I think there's probably it's probably better for most players. And and most players are are the guys that they've known where they wanted to go for a long time. They've been committed for a long time. They're not going to have any drama. They're not going to flip. They're just going to sign the paper and be happy and be done with it. And I think that probably applies to, oh, 75% of the guys that are going to sign. And you're going to see them sign this week, and they're going to be done and happy, and, and it'll all be you know sunshine and lollipops. The the interesting thing will be with the other 25%, because you know what you've got here is everybody's got to show their cards. If you're a recruit and you've said you're committed to the school for the last six months, but you've been taking visits, well, they're going to send you a letter of intent. And if you don't send it back, guess what? You're not really, re- you're not really committed. You, you didn't actually commit to them. And then flip side of that, if you committed to a school, they took your commitment, and all of a sudden, you know, it's tomorrow afternoon, and nobody sends you that letter of intent, and you don't have that to sign on Wednesday morning, well, you didn't have a real offer. But at least in this case, you've got five more weeks to figure out what you want to do, whereas before, some of these conversations would happen two to three days before the February signing day, and everybody's spots are pretty much filled. Hmm. Yeah, Andy, I mean, we've covered recruiting for a long time, and it's interesting because I I just wonder how this ends up affecting the February signing day and and how many we really do see latch on and and sign early. You're there in Gainesville. You're around a lot of these programs, but let's start with Florida. What are the early returns so far just on Dan Mullen hitting the recruiting trail and trying to put his staff together, which I think adds a whole other element to all of this early signing period uh, situation here? I think it's it's interesting because, you know, you look back and they, they offered Chip Kelly the job first. If Chip Kelly had taken that job, the learning curve would have been pretty pretty big for this first recruiting class. And it would have been interesting to see how that shook out. With Dan Mullen, he gets the job. He's been recruiting in the South all along. Knows who the major players are. Knows exactly who he's looking for. Uh, it, it was pretty clear when he got the job that Matt Corral, the quarterback they had committed, probably wasn't really a fit in the offense. And you saw Matt Corral commit to, to Ole Miss last week, where he's probably a much better fit in that offense. And now Dan Mullen is looking for a quarterback. Well, Emory Jones is a quarterback from Georgia, who was a, a guy that Dan Mullen offered at Mississippi State. But then Emory committed to Ohio State, which, you know, when you got an Ohio State offer, you're going to take that. Hmm. But he was open still all along. There were other schools that kind of nibbled at him. And Ohio State, realizing he was still looking around, well, they went looking around too, and they got a commitment from a guy in Texas last week. So uh, now Jones is looking at Florida. Uh, he's done an official visit to Florida and Florida State. And it could be Dan Mullen's first big recruiting clash with Willie Taggart at Florida State. And I have a feeling there's going to be a lot of those over the years. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm really curious about that because uh, so many people believe that Willie Taggart is the end-all, be-all when it comes to recruiting. Uh, I, I realize we're, we're getting just a sample, but, but intermediate to long-term, how do you think that's going to play out? I think it's going to be really interesting. Willie Taggart is, is very well connected in the state of Florida. He's a great recruiter in the state of Florida. But I, I wouldn't just totally dismiss Dan Mullen as a recruiter either because he's been in the SEC as a head coach for the last nine years. He understands that really you have to be the most aggressive recruiter on your staff as a good SEC head coach. And he's a guy that, you know, even at Mississippi State, would go after guys that you think they have no business going after that guy. And he wouldn't get him usually. But now that he's at Florida... He's got a shot with some of those guys. I mean, this is this quarterback's a great example. This is a guy, you know, he ID'd him at Mississippi State was his first offer. But obviously, if you're Ohio State versus Mississippi State, you're probably going to pick Ohio State. But all of a sudden, if the same guy who coached Dak Prescott and who, who coached Nick Fitzgerald and who coached Tim Tebow comes in and says, "Hey, would you like to come play with me at Florida?" Well, that's a different question entirely, and. So I think that's going to be a really interesting dynamic in the state. And remember, Mark Richt is still doing really well recruiting down in Miami, and Charlie Strong is at USF. So it's not going to be easy for anybody, for Dan Mullen, for Willie Taggart, for anybody to get the players they want in Florida. You're going to have to fight for every single one of them. Good point about Richt and and also Charlie Strong. And Andy, Alabama is no stranger to dealing with college football playoff or national championship preparations while having assistant coaches going other places. But this Jeremy Pruitt thing is a little weird. You know, he's going to be at Alabama for the early signing day. Just what are your thoughts on kind of the dynamics that we're seeing there? It is really strange because it's one of those things that Kirby Smart didn't have to deal with this two years ago when he was doing it. That happened fairly seamlessly. And remember, Kirby Smart at the time 
was trying to put together a recruiting class for Georgia. And everything worked out. They ended up winning the national title. Uh, the players didn't seem to mind. But, yeah, uh, Jeremy Pruitt's in a little bit different situation because he actually has to sign a class at Tennessee. And you're seeing, the, the, you know, because they've had some guys that – it, it looks like Jeremy Pruitt came in and said, well, I don't know if all these guys fit, but these guys that we've been looking at, you know, at the last job, they fit, so we're going to go with them. Uh, and, you know, I, I think it, he's doing very well because he also doesn't have to really change who he's recruiting. The guys he recruited at Alabama know him. The guys maybe he's been recruiting since he was working at Georgia uh, are guys that now are signing. So for him, it's it's probably not that hard in terms of, Knowing who to recruit and who to call and the contacts part of it, he's got that down. It's just juggling everything. But the thing is, once they get some guys signed, I think it gets a little easier. I think once he gets to New Orleans with Alabama, it's all sugar bowl all the time. There's a dead period through January. They can deal with the other stuff on the other side of the dead period. Andy, with all due respect, you're about as well known for being a foodie as you are college mm. football expert. So as we're uh, counting down the days to Christmas... What's your favorite Christmas food? Okay, so I've started making this every Christmas dinner. Uh, I get legs of lamb, and I, I take them, and I, I make little slits in them and put basically a half clove of garlic in each slit, cover it up with olive oil, cover it up with rosemary. You throw it on the grill, and you just let it go till it's, you know, about medium rareish, rareish to medium rare, bleeding a little bit still, and it is the best. And... That is what my family will be dining on on Christmas Day. Hmm. Do we call this rack of Andy? We we could, well now it's legs. So it's legs oh, legs of Andy. My bad. Andy's like, Andy's gams. Andy's gams, it's a staple, Andy's gams it's with a, a side of yams. Yeah, and a staple in your household. That's Aha, right. A staple with heart. the staples. I'm sure you haven't heard that joke before. <sighs> anyway, Never. Once. That uh, that sounds delicious. Paul would not eat something like that. I don't think. Do you eat lamb? You don't really eat meat. Not, so. not, in, uh, not since I've known you. Yeah, well, he's in a new era these days. <laughs> we can days. put some meat on your bones, Paul. Uh, well, I, I, can, I can stand to lose some. It, but. Is a, it is a fact, Andy, since I've been hanging around Mrs. Rutledge, I've actually gained weight. He wow. has. He's gained about two pounds. Thanks to me. But, well, that, we're, but, uh, but that's like a 50% increase in weight. So <laughs> since we're I don't about know what to you're be, doing, Laura. Since we're about to be separated, I will... Next time I see you, I'll probably be much thinner. I'm going to have to, you know, put some meat back on your bones. Hate to say it, but that not seeing you, you has actually been positive you, you, for my health. You come eat with me and Booger McFarlane just once, no, I, Paul. I, I, uh, you're you're going to look like us. I, I, I've, After I, just I, one meal. I spent every Sunday morning with Booger uh, for the last four months, and that's another reason I've, I've gained. Yeah, well, Booger eats really healthy, but Bo- but he eats a lot. <laughs> he does eat a lot. Booger, Booger texted me and said, what bowl games are you going to? I said, sugar and national title game. He said, oh, I'm going to both of those. So Booger and I are probably going to weigh about 400 pounds by the time. So he has okay, looked well, over at me on Sunday while I'm, I'm eating what pretty much looks like bird food it for is. breakfast. Cereal, and, dry. Uh, yeah. That's his go-to. Andy, anyway, we will, uh, Andy, we uh, we'll, will need to we'll, eat together at some of those games. We'll see you in New Orleans. Yes. Yeah, you no may problem. not, but I'll come no hang out with you. Can't wait to get your restaurant list there. Oh, Woo. it's you, you can find it on SI Eats, SI.com okay. slash eats. Here we go. Yeah, I'm all over that. Uh, we'll take a – thanks, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> we'll Thanks, be guys. right back two two weeks from today. We will be in New Orleans. I You'll probably wait. be there a week from today. I'll, I will be there on the 26th. I actually oh get there goodness. the night of the 26th, uh, providing you with all the Alabama reports you need. Can't wait. We'll be back with more. Hey, girl, have you done something new with your scales? Using new moisturizer? Nice. It really brings out the hazel in your eyes. Oh, hold on. Are you using whitening strips, too? Your fangs look good, girl. Really good. A really charming snake charmer? Surprising. What's not surprising? How much you could save by switching to Geico. Wait, what? Have you been doing Pilates, too? Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Welcome oh, back. Man. Rich is in Atlanta, and you are next up. Hey, hey Rich. What's up, Jack? How you doing? Uh, hey, Rich. Good, man. How are you? <laughs> hey, Jack, uh, I'm going to weigh in. I'm going to be more Archbishop Marino than your boss, and I think that you ought to, um, I think because of the season, I think forgiveness is in order. Lift the ban? Yeah. Okay. But but I think there should be a codicil. There should be a compromise. Codicil. What, can, a, great, can, what a great word. Rich is the best. Uh, well, um, Jack, well, thanks, Laura. Um, Jack, I think the compromise should be uh, 
could you limit him to one call a day? Just like he can package. No, all no that's not acceptable. I was, I, I will speak for him. That's the, not acceptable. One, I, that's Rich, not acceptable. I see where you're coming from, but you know, Jim. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so if it's more than one call a day, keep the ban. Well, what, what makes Jim great, Rich, is is his obsessiveness and compulsiveness. Uh, not for the rest of us, but if you but if you say so, I didn't that's say obsessive cool. compulsive. I just said <laughs> those yeah, are two I, separate things. Hey, right? I just. Uh, I heard y'all talk about being in New Orleans. If um, if UGA gets here with Alabama, will, will you will the show be at the Congress Center again? Oh sure. Oh yeah. No, no, if, the, the Paul Feinbaum. Yeah, show. oh yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, we'll be there. I mean, I don't know. We, we, we don't days, plan. We don't plan that far. No, in everyone advance. just tells us where to go. But but yeah, we will be there at some point. I bet it'll be the same place that we met you, though, Rich. Or I know Paul Absolutely. are be the same place C-Hall, I met you. That's called C Hall, Laura. Yes, that's C Hall. I, I would, uh, I would think we would Center. be there. Yeah, Rich. And, okay, and Rich, by great. the way, I mean, obviously from your perspective, you hope we're there because Alabama's there, but we will be there if an SEC team is there. So there are two. Okay, great. And, and by the way, Rich, if we're not, if an SEC team is not there, I will see you in Tahiti. <laughs> <laughs> or Atlantis. I've been to Atlantis too, Jack. <laughs> hey, Did you go down the water slide there, Rich? The Atlantis is a cool place. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. And Jordan owns a house there too, okay, by it's a the house. way. But he used to have hey, that bridge the- suite. Didn't he? Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I, mean, I, that, I have not probably. been to the Atlantis in about fifteen years. So, no, yeah. you're right. He did That's have that. I'm pretty place. sure he did. Yeah, it's just really expensive. Hey, y'all, have honest opinion. I could ask Michael. You know, there's been a lot of chatter about right the old now. Uber coach. It's, he's at Colquitt now. Ross Pros. There's a lot of chatter about him maybe going to Tennessee or mm-hmm. Alabama. Do you think that's fair? Uh, or uh, and what kind of intrinsic value do you? think a guy like that could bring to a college staff. Well, he's a very good coordinator. Uh, I mean, uh, as a play caller, uh, Rush is, is outstanding. Um, I, I don't know um, whether or not he would do that, but uh, I think Rush has always wanted to be a college coach. Yeah, I mean, it would be a monster raise, obviously. Yeah, I mean, I think done, he'd do it. Done. I think his age and then his baggage. You think How much would his baggage come um, in play? Just, you know, his I, – I, I'll, I'll, his baggage is baggage. Um, for those who don't know the story, uh, he was living a, a dual life while the coach at at Hoover High School. That, that rich. That's that's pretty bad. I, I, I mean, by the way, there, there was a there was a documentary done on him on ESPN, so it's not like I'm. No, no, it's out there. Right. Yeah. yeah, but Rich, that's that would be because I think otherwise. I think if that weren't the case, if he didn't have the baggage, I think he would already be out there and in the mix. May, maybe already have one of these jobs. I, I do believe that's, that's a great point. Rich, that's a great that's point, Mark. Rich, the only positive though old. is uh, if there is a positive to having a dual life is that he he owned up to it and yeah. he he fell on the sword. That I'm not. That a lot of people try that. Very few people get away, but but that was part of that documentary, mm-hmm. which I was in. Do you think for. he could? Re- do you think honestly he could be an effective recruiter? I do. Yes. Yeah, he knows that area so well, and and Rich, I mean, you know this in in high school football, it's it's different, but there's a level of recruiting to it, and there's also a level of understanding the other side of the recruiting world. So if you're somebody who knows it from the high school side, I think you're even more effective of a recruiter from the college level. Right, and the last thing in the in the equation is that they did approve the tenth coach. So there, everybody gets to hire one more coach. So you would think that would be in his favor as well, right? Well, uh, his relationship with Jeremy is is pretty deep. So that's about uh, the, the extent. I mean, I, there, I I just don't know. I don't know what Jeremy Pruitt is thinking a lot. Hey, thanks for the call, Rich. I, I do appreciate it. Daryl is up next. What do you say, Daryl? Well, first of all, I think I found. I never thought I would find a more obnoxious fan base in Florida. I think I found it in Oklahoma. I mean, yeah. I don't even know why Georgia's going to show up, Paul. Not the way they're talking. I mean, they, they, they beat Auburn last year. They beat Alabama in the Super Bowl. I don't know what any of that matters, but it matters to them. They act like they beat Alabama when it matters. I'm like, good heavens alive. They are talking more trash, okay, with their Heisman quarterback. I just cannot wait for the game to get here. They, we're not going to be able to block them on the offensive line. I think the coaches come out with a uh, All-American team. Notre Dame had two offensive linemen on that All-American team, but we're not going to be able to block, block Oklahoma. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Okay, let me say this. I think you should reinstate him. There's no doubt about it. And this is why. First of all, he's banned, he got banned for the wrong reason, okay? It doesn't matter 
if people are like you or not. It doesn't matter what you say as long as they're saying something. So I think that, that, that right there should count for something. Same of all, I think the host is a pretty smart guy. I think that he's smart enough to realize that you keep your friends close and your enemies closer, okay? Uh, great line, host, great line. I mean, I also it's funny that the Laura's host, sitting so close to me right now. <laughs> we are enemies. <laughs> I think the host... I think the host is smart enough to realize that it's a Nick Saban thing to do. Okay, Nick Saban. Hey, hey, listen, uh, uh, you know me. Um, I, I don't. I don't get involved in this. Uh, I was about to say something. Uh, this back and forth <laughs> between <laughs> between uh, Jim and, and, and people. Uh, you know that. But you're. But it's the Paul Feinbaum show, and that's where you get the last word on it. Let me say, I don't believe Nick, Paul, I've heard the host him say himself say many times on this show. Okay, I don't care what you say about me. How many times have I heard that? I don't care what you say about well, me. But yeah. I'm like, hey, hold on, that's a cap or something. And I don't believe it's against the ESPN rules, and this is why. You tell me that a, a caller is banned from a show for saying the B word, but you can be employed by ESPN, get intoxicated, end up in the wrong bed in the wrong room of a hotel, and you keep your job. So <laughs> I don't, I'm not fine. And you know what? I'm hey, listen, I'm uh, I, I can't. I, if you wanted me to start defending all the things that happened to ESPN, we, we have to talk off the air. Um, oh, I saw, I saw their president was on the day. And if you can't. If you can't lift the ban on Jim for that, you should lift it on this right here. This reason right here, okay? Give him the benefit of the doubt, and this is why, okay? First of all, if you look up the definition of bitch, it says female dog, okay? Right. You went to Tennessee. You went to Tennessee. We all know that, okay? All right, here we go. We Smoke all a know that it's, it's smoky. Now, maybe Jim didn't realize that there was a male. I thought it was a female, and it's really a male. But I can understand Jim thinking it's a female. By the way, Tennessee's football program plays because they play like a bunch of girls. Oh, we wow. lift the band mm. ball. See ya. Wow, that was such a strong defense of. By the way, Daryl, there's nothing wrong with playing like a girl, so don't use that as an excuse. Well, agreed. Uh, the only thing I would say about about you know again, I keep hating to give history of the show. The only, the only permanent band that's ever been in effect was a guy who called in. And said that he was glad that one of our favorite callers and a personal friend, I gave the eulogy at his funeral, uh, he was glad that he died of cancer and he mm. said, karma, Mm-mm. quote unquote, is a. Mm-mm. And nope. that was it for me. And there, that, was, that was irrevocable. It was never changing. It was a bad guy and that's what happened. And, and Jim went to him over the weekend looking for solace. Um, uh, as far as Jim, I, I don't care. It really doesn't matter to me whether he calls or not. It's not a big deal. I don't like to ban anyone. Uh, that, that, what, what, what he said the other day in the context of things that have been said is not that bad. Uh, I'm more offended by things that he said about other people who, are, who I'm friends with, and I'll just leave it generically. But that's okay. Uh, you know, he's, he, he can do, people can vote and do whatever they want. We'll decide on that some other time. Too much time has been spent on that today. I agree. I mean – isn't this supposed to be a sports show? And don't they tell us all the time we should stick to sports? I, I, well, the thing is that um, the things that Jim likes the most about the show are what's going on now. <laughs> well, he doesn't talk ball. Remember, he doesn't talk ball. So, but he can out talk anybody. But he can out talk anybody. He will though. We're uh, we're up against a break here. You okay, Randy. Randy's my. Back to the program. Glad you are with us. Clay is in Biloxi, Mississippi. Good afternoon. Mr. Feinbaum, you are as hard to get in touch with of a telephone as it is to find the Rohan Davy Museum in Baton Rouge. <laughs> but be it may, sir, I have a non confrontational call to pay you and it goes back for a couple of months ago to where you made the comment that someone knew more about college football than you and I do not want to debate that with you purpose of my phone call, sir, is to pay you a compliment as to why, in my opinion, I like you. I believe you have a six-giant-step radius around you and perhaps Chris Berman, but you in particular have, if you vote for the Mobile Press Register, you listen to the Bear Bryant show with me. Okay, that education and now has made you able to answer phone calls, to weed out the good and the bad, to go along with the show, but your ability to have satirical comments on the fly is amazing, sir. 
And like I said, Merry Christmas, and, and, I, and I do love you as your show. And thank you very much for taking my call. I've been on hold for an hour and a half just to tell you that, sir. Clay, thank you very much, and I hope you have a great Christmas and, and, a, and a happy New Year. Thank you very much. I hope we talk again soon. Thank you. Good stuff. Really appreciate that. Mike is up next. Mike, thank you, and uh, welcome to our show. Hey, Paul, how are you doing? Lord? We are doing great, hey. thanks. Hey, uh, listen, I think, you know, I don't really like Jim particularly, but uh, I think he's kind of, you know, he kind of gets people's blood pumping during the day. I was thinking if you could bring him back during the probation period. What do you mm. think? You know, I, I don't know. I mean, uh, he just said something. Um, I, I mean, I've been, I thought I've been, I've been pretty benevolent to him today, Laura. Yeah, no, you've been and, and very he, judicious. And I, I don't try to read Twitter and take it personally, but I, but I do take it uh, for what it's worth. And he just said uh, that the show used to be great. We've heard that before. Oh, well, uh, yeah. He said it was electric and he liked the host. And now he said the last three years, I can't stand the host. Hmm. So. Um, but, and then uh, he said, I, I do want to apologize to him to having to subject him to a program that he hates the host. I know. I, you know, I'm really, I, I am so sorry that apparently his remote doesn't seem to be working. Because I've tried to make it, uh, we, 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 and, and I think that's something that among the many, many things that, that you brought is you, you brought this congeniality that you, you, you're friendly with everyone. I mean, there's a few I, I people I spar every, with. No, I, I love every single person on this show. I really do. So, hey, Paul, what I mean, I'm I, trying I, to... Yeah. It's kind of where I should... This is where I could probably get my feelings hurt. I'm the, sorry. Are you okay over there? Not really. Do you want me to come... <laughs> no. I'll come over there and give you a hug. Yeah, I, it's been a while All since... Right. I've, come on. No, but I mean, if, uh, on a probation, if he didn't if he couldn't say nothing... Thank you. Uh, ...to, you know, uh, defend the whole... Jim. I guess... For you. What was that? I was I was I was distracted. <laughs> I had to plug back in. Oh, I'm back. Okay. Hey guys, look, he he can't say nothing against a host or a guest of your show or a caller, and he cannot say nothing. Oh, uh, how sweet! That is sweet. Uh, he, he likes you, and I know he likes you. You know, I like him. I'm talking about her. I oh, her. <laughs> hey, oh but, yeah, Mike's on the delay. So on, on a probation, on a probation, I'm, I'm saying you know you can't offend any host or caller, and you can't offend. Uh, well, you got to be nice and talk something about SEC football. You're right. Hey, listen, Mike. Thank you very much for Thanks, sharing Mike. all that. I wish, I wish Jim would call back in so we could be attacking him versus talking about him. Uh, Mike is up next in Macon, Georgia. Hey, Paul. How y'all doing today? We are great. Good. The reason I called was when Jim made his infamous call the other day, I was actually in the caller queue and oh. had my phone on speakerphone, and thus my 10-year-old son and I mm. were treated to an unfiltered version of Jim's call. And to me, though, even the words he used weren't that bad. I mean, it was bad. I'd prefer my my little boy not to hear that, but he's not scarred for life or anything. But to me, it was the viciousness and the intensity that it was said. And that's really what bothered me. So anyway, for what it's worth, I mean, you know, I'm not for banning everybody. I can't throw any stones because I definitely have done my own sinning. But uh, love your show. Just wanted to offer up my opinion. Thank you very, very much. Uh, appreciate it. Let's continue with more phone calls. It has been that kind of show. Um, <sighs> Colton is up next. Colton, go right ahead. Hey, Paul. How are you doing today? We are doing great. That's good. I, what do you think about um, old Shea Patterson from um, Old Miss transferring to Michigan? Yeah, I, I didn't. Uh, I don't. I don't blame him. Uh, Laura, you, you know Shea pretty well. Uh, were you surprised? 
I wasn't, Colton. And, you know, you felt like at some point you would see something like this happen, whether it was Shea or another big-time player from that Ole Miss program. And I think what we have to be careful about is judging kids who do this because at the end of the day it's their career and he has a great, exciting career ahead of him. He went to another league, so SEC fans and Ole Miss fans shouldn't be that disappointed about what he may do there. And, and I'll admit, I mean, if you're an Ole Miss fan, it's probably going to be tough watching him there because I imagine he'll have a lot of success and you just wonder what it would have been like to stay there. But he wasn't a part of these uh, NCAA violations or alleged violations and the sanctions just shouldn't be something that affects him for the rest of his life. Yeah, I ain't no Ole Miss fan. I just wanted to rub it in a little bit on him because I hate no. Ole Miss. <laughs> yeah, Ole Miss ain't ever right. going to win nothing. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, yeah, they certainly are in uh, are going through a difficult time. I, I think that would be oh, the yeah. uh, understatement. Thanks for the call. Shane is uh, up next. Shane, go right ahead. Hey, thanks, Paul, for taking my call. Um, just wondering, with uh, Fromm's success and, and, of course, the commit from the number one quarterback uh, uh, coming out of high school, what do you think is going to happen with Jacob Eason? I, I coached against that kid in high school for three years, and he's got a ridiculous skill set, and somebody's got to be clamoring for him. I mean, he's got a big-time arm. That That is a really interesting question, uh, and I think, uh, as you all know, it's about to get more intriguing. So uh, I have no earthly idea what Jacob's thinking. He has not shown or played a card. And, Shane, all he has done, which I think speaks to the type of kid that he is, is just be a great teammate. Um, I'll never oh, yeah. forget watching him after Georgia won the SEC championship game, him, you know, putting on that SEC championship hat and, and celebrating with his teammate. They were taking photos of him holding up the big SEC sign and, and he just looked absolutely thrilled to be there. So I think he's been a very, by all accounts, very supportive teammate through something that, you know, a lot of kids would have struggled with. Yeah, I, I coach actually his rival high school and um, uh, would expect nothing else from that kid. He's, he was class act all the way through and just, uh, you know, I wish him the best. I, I, you know, selfishly would like to see him back out here on the West Coast so we could watch him play. But, but um, I mean, somebody's got to pick that kid up. I mean, he's, he's a guy who can walk across the stage, you know, in, in April with the NFL. It's, he's got that kind of skill set. So, I can't imagine he's just going to sit and, and, and do nothing. I can't either. Hey, thank you very much. And we're up against a break. We still have another hour and 15 minutes or so to go. I think we need a special prosecutor. Uh, we're going to have to get somebody. Uh, uh, I, I don't want to I don't want to give 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 away the, the verdict, but we're going to mm-hmm. probably have to throw the uh, the ban out due to inter- Russian interference. You know, you, you just didn't you have a feeling that the Russians were interfering this entire time? I. It felt, and maybe, honestly, maybe that's who kidnapped me in Tuscaloosa. I came in here today before the show, and there was a, a big bottle of Stoli vodka and some borscht, like right here. Yeah. And he drank the whole thing. I, did. I can assure you, I would have if I had had the opportunity. Yeah. You, you can testify to that. No, totally. Um, and, and you're right. Uh, there, there have been clues, and we just have been so obtuse. There was a salad with Russian them. dressing. I ate that. Uh, you know, there have been clues. They've been trying to tip us off that they have interfered, and we just were being blind to all these these clues. So uh, now, I mean, you're right. We've got Hannity on line one. we got to figure out who else can can report on this because, uh, Paul, um, are you getting are you getting a message from Boris? Oh, okay. <laughs> I've got Vladimir right here. Putin on line one. Liberty is up next. How are you, Liberty? How are you doing, Paul? I haven't talked to you in years. Oh, my goodness. No, is this the Liberty that I, that, that I used to love in Birmingham? The and only Liberty Bell. You got to Okay. Uh, Liberty, for those of, for this new audience here, uh, because we have not talked to you in I don't know how many years. It's been a couple of years. I listen to you. I, well, actually, I watch you on TV. So explain, yeah. explain, to, time, explain to everyone who you are. I'm um, the first Miss Cape Pride in Birmingham, Alabama, and probably the uh, most talked about uh, female impersonator in the Southeast, and just one mean, mean, mean old man now. But I still, I still hit the hit the boards once in a while. But you know, I just Did you, uh, uh, didn't you once run for mayor of Birmingham? I ran for city council in District Three in oh, okay. 2000. Okay, I didn't remember that. I ran that. against, I believe, Valerie Abbott. Um, yeah, because she's a friend of mine. She drives with me. Um, she rides with me every year. 
This year will be my 30th gay pride parade here in Birmingham, and probably my last, because I think I've pretty much done enough. I remember it was the John Walker thing that I called you on. The oh, yeah, time. yeah. Uh, because of, uh, he had come out. John Rocker like uh, who used to, uh, he, every time he used to come in from the, uh, he was a pitcher for the Braves, a relief pitcher. Mm-hmm. Every time he would come in from the bullpen, they would play um, Twisted Sisters. What was the song? We're not going to take it. Uh, I, I can't remember what the name of the song was. No, I can't remember either. It was kind of a slap to him, but he kind of took it well. Yeah, and anyway, and he objected to it, uh, and I really don't uh, remember why. And then I ended up interviewing Dee Snyder, who was the lead, uh, the front man for, the tw- for Twisted Sister. We had, we had this major blow up. I met him, um, I believe, in Atlanta. Um, I have nothing good to say about him, so I'll say nothing at all. There's <laughs> much how I feel about RuPaul and anybody else and kicks me off on the way. But, um, no, I just wanted to wish you a Merry Christmas. I usually send you a card every year, but I didn't know where to send it. So I figured I'd give you a call and do it. Well, Liberty, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I miss seeing you. We had such a great time together back in the day. Back when oh, the show really back. was good. I, I'll be back. I'll tell you. Something controversial would come out. Um, yeah, we had quite the crew. There was Phyllis and your buddy there. I can't remember his name. Um, the butler kisser there. What was Shane? That was it. Yeah, I didn't like Shane, him yeah. at all either. <laughs> yeah. What was his name? Shane. Yeah, that was it. Is he still around? God, I couldn't stand him. No, he died in 2011 from cancer. Oh, I don't. No, I can't say anything bad about the dead. So now I'll say, well, I liked him all right. Mm-hmm. No, I had a, I had a cancer scare there for a while, but other than that, I'm, well, I am I'm so happy that you're uh, alive and well. <laughs> yes, I am. You still I, do? Are you, know, you still entertaining? Merry Christmas! And that that woman that sits with you, she's absolutely gorgeous. Well, thank you, Liberty. And honey, trust me, I know makeup when I see it. I just wait too much. Have a Merry Christmas, Paul. Take care, darling. Okay, great to talk to you. <laughs> I mean, is Liberty implying that I wear makeup? Because obviously I'm not wearing any, and neither are you. No. I, Even I, though you have had makeup reapplied about seven times during this show. <laughs> Every hour, they come. Lori comes in. I let out your secrets. Joe definitely. is up next in North Carolina. How are you, Joe? Doing fine, Paul. How are you and Laura? I hope you're having a good holiday season. We are. Thank you. We are. Sure. I just wanted to talk about the uh, early signing period. Uh, unless I'm incorrect, I think the uh, uh, NCAA Division One men's basketball and women's, I guess, has, still has their early signing period, which, if I recall, the intention was to avoid the senior season of high school. So that would be my biggest complaint about this particular football early signing period is why it was positioned where it was. It really should be in August when you think about it, and that way the marquee players, which that was always the reason, was to get the marquee players to where they can uh, stop the recruiting process and if that was done in August, then coaches would still have the chance to go through the entire year. And really the, the issue of, um, oh, I'll say, of a, of a coach perhaps changing jobs at the end of the year, uh, to me, I'm kind of a purist. And uh, to me, if, if a person uh, chooses a school on the basis of a personality or a coach, that's a poor decision for choosing a college. So I just wonder what you all thought about that. Uh, yeah, the, I do think, I do agree with your, your August concept but uh, i'm still not sure i mean at least that takes everything out of out of whack but i i really don't like this one where we currently are yeah and joe you're bringing up a great point about you just can't commit to the personality as opposed to the school and i think a lot of kids do try to do that but what, what i think we're dealing with in this exact scenario right now is that you could be committing to an assistant coach that literally could be gone the next day and there's just been so much changeover and you also may not know the coach so you can wait around until february but then that offer may not be in place so there's just a lot that's in flux that i think affects this particular year maybe more than other years well the idea of having it really i guess six weeks prior to the regular signing period that's not really early that's uh, kind of like yeah. an interim Right. Signing Good period. Point. So really, if you're going to have it early, have it before the senior season. That way the marquee players, the ones who are being bothered 24 hours a day, those kids can go ahead and sign and get that out of the way. And then really there's a trickle-down effect because then you know who's available, who's not. And then the D1AA's or whatever they call them now and the D2's, and the D, you know, it all just goes down and it makes everybody's job a lot easier. Great call, Joe. I hate to run. Thank you very much. We are at the end of the hour. One more to go. In order for the business to keep growing, you have to keep investing. 
The region's Next Step project is helping real customers like Eddie confidently take their next step in life and in business. It took a lot of years and just working hard, but Regions never gave up on us. Ready to take your next step? Visit regions.com slash next step. Well, we're in a great place and we're ready to take our next step. Regions, official bank of the SEC, member FDIC, paid appearance by an actual Regions customer telling his real story.